Good morning and welcome to The Brewview, the Instagram live podcast where Kanama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. I'm your host, Adam, otherwise known as Cafe Kanama here on Instagram, and today we are joined not by one guest, but by a menagerie of guests from the third-party Kanama media community. We are joined by both Rod and MJ from the Dom and Nerds, as well as Ryan and Tony Stabile from Bevel's Advocate. These are two of Kanama's premier podcasts, and they are also part of agencies or collectives that are doing lots of third-party media in the Kanama space. And today, I'm just very excited to dive into a topic that I have a deep heart for, which is third-party media in Kanama. As you can tell, I do this on a weekly basis, where we bring on influencers, professionals, brand owners onto this show to chat about their stories. And today, we are going to be chatting about the stories of the people that are documenting the story. So we are going to be doing this in a unique way today because Instagram Live, if you don't know, uh, doesn't allow more than four people on. And as you would have heard, we're having a total of five people. So we're going to have to have some fun today and change things up a little bit throughout the episode by bringing on a few different guests at a few different times and really getting deep into the fun of it. So stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun today diving into this conversation. But before we dive in, as always, if you've been here before, you know I like to know what you are drinking this morning because we like to take some time to shout out some of our viewers today. Well, you guys, let me know what you're drinking. And before I shout those people out down in the chat, let me say a couple things. First off, I want to give a really special shout out to a longtime listener of the show, a new brand in the Kanama community, and a good friend of mine, Jacob Call, who started New Laced Kanama. Uh, if you go back long time into the history of review, you would know that Jacob had sent me some coffee scented conditioner or some coffee scented uh, new lace Kanama wax. And dude, guys, Jacob is just a beauty. I really like the guy a lot. He is a vet. He is honestly just a very warm hearted guy in the community. And he was originally doing Kanama wax for your Kens. He's a beauty. And uh, we, we got it hooked up with one of his new Kanamas, the Mayflower which is honestly an incredible kendama. I was sessioning it all last night on my stories and I love the design. It's really detailed and it plays amazing. So I just want to give a special shout out to Jacob. Uh, He's been killing it and I'm just stoked for him. He's been a long time listener of the the show. So show him some love, go check him out. And if you want to go pick up one of his new kendamas, they are hype. With that said, uh, a couple things I want to say before we, we get in about today's episode. It's going to be a little bit different. Uh, We're going to break this chat into three different parts. First off, we're going to do a quick interview with the nerds, both MJ and Rod. Secondly, we're going to do a quick interview with the Bevel's Advocate with Ryan and Tony. And then thirdly, we're going to kick off Tony and Rod, and we're going to get MJ and Ryan on here. And we're going to have a three-way showdown. We're going to duke it out for the best podcast in the Kendama community. Just kidding, we're not actually going to be duking it out, but we are going to be talking about third-party media in Kendama, and we will be having some fun with it, probably poking a little bit of fun at one another, so make sure you stick around until the end. And as always, drop questions down below in the Q&A tool. We will be hitting those in today's episode, and you know, who knows what's going to happen? We're going to have some fun. That's what's going to happen. So without further ado, let's check it out and see what you guys are drinking this morning. I just brewed a fresh cup not too long ago in the Arrow Press from Proud Mary Coffee Roasters. They are based out of Portland and Australia. They're an Australian-based roaster. We see Dama Bones saying, Good morning, coffee gang. Drew Lace has got his Colombian dark roast coffee, as always, and he is very excited for this episode. We got Crispy at 10 FPS with his Dr. Zevia. The Bevel's Advocate is here. We got New Lace Kanama in the chat with the Volcanica Dominican. Absolutely. We got lots of homies in here. <laughs> Tony Serrano, no, you bring those boxing gloves back out. <laughs> and Kendama Jinchariki, a brand new Patreon subscriber, has that big jug of water. So without further ado, let's bring on uh, the nerds. We're going to bring on MJ and Rod for a quick little interview, and then we're going to transition into an interview with the Bevel's Advocate. And like I said, we're going to close it off with a big duke out between the Bevel's Advocate, the Brewview, and the Dama nerds. So... Let's get the nerds on here alongside Rod. I think I can send requests to two people at a time. Let's dive into this week's review. Rodney. Hey, what's up. good? Rod, how are you doing? 
I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? It's good to talk to you. It's been a while. I know it has been a little bit here. I'm just going to quickly send the request as well to MJ. He may not have gotten it the first time. Rod, where, where are you at right now? I've seen you on I'm in my slides. apartment in Vancouver. Yeah, I've been sailing around a lot, getting ready to do a big sailing trip with some homies. It's going to be good. I'm um, very excited to, to see the adventures of Rod on the Sea. Oh, yes, as am I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you been out but, sailing a bunch recently? Uh, yeah, we actually just did a trip. Uh, if uh, anybody knows Vancouver Island at all, our boat is in Salt Spring Island. So it's like off the coast of Vancouver kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we sailed around the island out to Tofino and hung out there for a few days and then sailed back. And it took about 10 days all in all. Okay. It was pretty good. Heck yeah. And MJ, welcome here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a different kind of setup than we had last time. <laughs> last time we did this, we had Rod sitting next to me. It was like 4 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. <laughs> I had <Dude>. just finished. <laughs> yeah, we got up pretty early for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for that. It, it was a it helps me tremendously. <laughs> it was yeah. a, it was a wild episode that one. We had just finished a brew battle. I was beat. It was a long crazy week, and we got up like at four in the morning because a we had to get Rod to the airport by what like seven a.m. or something seven, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seven or yeah, seven something was. stupid like that. Yeah, it was crazy, and obviously it was it was <laughs> nice for you because it was a uh, middle of the afternoon or late evening maybe for for you. Yeah, and, it was yeah. evening. I remember that one. Yeah, I was so burnt. I remember I woke up and I'm like, hey Rod, I'm gonna go make coffee. So I went and made a cup of coffee, gave it to Rod, and then I'm like, I'm going to go make a second cup. So I went back down and made another <laughs> yeah. cup, and Quick it still man. wasn't enough. <laughs> no, it never is at that time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, guys, well, here's what we're going to do. Um, if, you, if you weren't here for the beginning, we're going to break this into three parts today. We're going to have a little chat with you guys. Mm -hmm. I want to chat with you about the Dominards and more about Kanama Media. I know that we had both of you guys on earlier in the show's history, back in season one, back in October. And mostly we talked about your guys' stories with Kendama. Not so much about Kendama Media, not so much about Kendertainment. We talked a lot about Japan, and I definitely recommend people go back and listen to that episode, especially if they want to see me tired as ever trying to make it through. <laughs> <laughs> but you uh, made it, we're, you made it. We, we did make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna dive in a little bit into your story and then we're gonna get the bevel's advocate on and then we'll bring back yeah. mj and we're gonna have ryan on and we're gonna have a little showdown talking about what kendama media needs in the future talking about the current state of it and how i think well i'm coming into it with a biased perspective i really do believe that what you guys and the bevel's advocate home media and myself are doing is really helping to push kendama forward in a different way than just being another brand creating kendamas we're, we're doing i think a, a pretty honoring work in documenting the stories or the history of the game that we're playing, at least in its modern context. Yeah. So yeah. we'll dive into that a little bit, but I want to nice. know, as always, we won't do all three of my starting questions, but I do want to know what are you drinking today? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. If we go through well, everything. It will you want to? Yeah. You want to start, MJ? Go for it. Oh, dude. Okay. Well, I have the Coedo because it is what, 12, oh. 1208 over here. Coedo, <laughs> uh, they teamed up with a the. Hondui Gucci Coffee Brewery in Tokyo, and uh, they got, uh, what is that, Ethiopian wal Walka? Ethiopian Walka Aria. <laughs> what, what is that? Is that a beer or is that a coffee? I don't, I so, don't know. Okay, so it's a beer. Oh, come on. Okay, I guess I have to explain it. A beer it. with so, coffee. It oh, a it's beer. a beer A little bit of column coffee. A, a little it's bit of column B. It's with coffee, exactly, because oh, you know, like, you got to do it. And this is something that, uh, mm. I love coffee, I love beer. Whenever I have it, usually, it's like a stout or a bock, which mm -hmm. I'm really not a fan of. But this <laughs> is a coffee lager. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. That does which, sound pretty good. Yeah, oh, Absolutely. Oh, oh, nice amber color right there. Dude, and look at that. That thing looks be, thick. This is what I will be sipping on. Get right Enjoy. on. That looks delicious. What about you, Rob? Craft breweries, craft roasters. I, I'm drinking some regular old coffee. No, no beer in this coffee. Just but, regu uh, <laughs> regular old coffee. Do you I actually, a friend, of, a friend of mine owns a cafe here in Vancouver called the Uncommon Cafe, and he roasts his own beans and stuff. Oh, no way. Do so you, I do have you his coffee. Uh, once in a while, I work with the guy, so he actually brings like wraps for us for lunch and stuff every once in a while. But okay. I do go there and drink all of his beer from time to time. Yeah, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm, hop I'm hoping to get out to Vancouver soon. You guys got a good coffee scene out there. Uh, Parallel, 49th Parallel is a good one. Revolver Coffee, mm -hmm. and there's another one that 
I keep being told uh, Tempest. No, not Tempest. I don't. I don't remember what it's called. Mm. But there's another one that I'm supposed there's to. There's so go many. To. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of really good. I, ones. I like J. I like JJ Bean. JJ Bean. Oh yeah, yeah. They're a little bit. Yep. Like maybe I don't know. Maybe not as like underground. Like. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know much about the coffees here. I just like an espresso in the morning, you know? <laughs> hey, okay. Absolutely. Okay, so guys, here's here's what I want to start with. And I'm going to ask the same question to the Bevel's Advocate when they get on. So they get a little prep time. But if you could explain what the Dom and Nerds is in one to two sentences, what would you tell me? In one to two sentences, what is the Dom and Nerds? Not your mom's podcast. Couple. Not your mom's Kendo I mean, podcast. That's the, but that's one. Yeah. That's our, that's our, that's our, um, our motto okay. right there that we've yeah. had since the beginning. Um, I would. What comes to mind for me is I would say it's just a couple of nerds talking about kendama. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, okay. Here, here's what I want to know. So that that's a great starting place. I want to know. Take us back in time briefly to how the Dom nerds came to life and why. Now, my understanding is first off, entertainment uh, Ken existed before the Dom nerds. Is that correct? Correct. Oh, yeah. Sir. So. Yes. Well before. Do you want to give me a quick <laughs> brief history of entertainment? Because I think my assumption is is that. They're co collect, uh, connected, right? They're, yeah, yeah. they're collaborative. Obviously, the Dominators is kind of underneath of Kendertainment, and MJ, you run Kendertainment. So exactly. want to give us a brief history of Kendertainment and catch us up to the Dominators. Sure. So let's go back. <laughs> Time travel. Uh, 2013, when I discovered Dama and I became friends with Sue, who just recently opened a... a a photo shop, a design shop in my town in Kawagoi. I gifted him a kendama. He loved it so much. We had weekly, every Tuesday, you gotta keep it on Tuesday, Tuesday jams. <laughs> Everyone would get together and the vibes were just the greatest. All right. They were the best. Everyone was just so high on kendama. Uh, Sue, of course, the most because he quit photography and design and became a kendama shop. Um, then I was like, I want to like, kind of go more a little bit beyond of just making edits because me and my buddies were doing that. And we had a group we call we were called the Kandamabu, which is Kandama, but it's like kind of play on words. Uh, and then boo is like club or team in Japanese. So yeah, we were that I still have some of those stickers. Fun fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they were good. Very Japanese. And sorry to interrupt. And so, but. and so, um, I want to have that some way that I could share with other people, you know, show, show what our, our team was. And at that time, there's a lot of teams in Japan. Um, so I, I was a fan of watching YouTube. It's gonna, this is getting too long. Everyone, you guys know Braille, Braille skateboarding. Yep. So I kind of ripped off of them because I love their shit so much. Excuse my French. No, no, no it's all good. So it's all much. good. <laughs> and at the time I stopped skateboarding, I grew up skateboarding, I stopped skateboarding, um, and then I found their videos like before the glass skateboard when it was like Doug and Lance, and for the people who know, and uh, I was like, I can do something like this for the Kendama community, hopefully people would dig it, I know I would just have fun hanging out with my friends playing whack-ass Kendamas, um, and that's what we did, and we were the Kendama Boop YouTube channel, and we were doing that for a few years. And then uh, a bunch of my buddies started to stop playing Kendama, stop going to the jams every time. Um, I started it right when I had my first kid. So my schedule was kind of like here and there, but I was still passionate about it. So I went for it. But then I, I, I took, a, took a turn, changed it into Kendertainment, kind of wanted to get a little more serious, put a collective of different types of series of mm -hmm. uh, kind of corners of the, of the, of the whole show i guess you could say mm -hmm. the channel and uh then i wanted to do a podcast didn't have anybody to do it with because i wanted to work <clears> with someone of kendama and then rod came to japan and before you know me and him yeah. hung out a bunch of times when he was hanging in japan yeah we um, did some shotgun interviews and stuff before then exactly yeah yeah and and then he came to live in japan i asked him like dude would you be my partner in this Ken Dominard's adventure, this Dominard adventure. He popped the question, and yeah. I said yes. And he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you be my podcast host? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I, and I said, oh, yes. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So curious from your side, uh, Rod, I want to know when, mm -hmm. when he approached you with that idea to, to do something that wasn't specifically brand related, but to join a third party media piece of the Konami community, mm -hmm. what was your original thought? And were you already thinking along that lines of doing something in that space? Or was this something that just got prompted to you by MJ? Oh, I was, I was hyped. I was just like, man, that's a great idea. Like, I'm like, why not? Like, I love sitting here and shooting the shit, uh, talking about Kendama. But, uh, you know, it's like, okay. as much as the next guy. <laughs> let it, let, no, so we, we're we're right, so, yeah, you know, we don't, nerds. we don't censor ourselves we're gonna, we're on the nerds. We're going to put the explicit label on this episode. I'm, ju I'm just fine with it already. <laughs> all right. Well, in that case. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> In all honesty, I've never really been much of a podcast guy. Even since starting Dominators, I still don't really listen to podcasts mm -hmm. very much at all. And not that I don't enjoy them. Like when I do, I always have. It's just not been something that I've been super drawn to. Um, and I don't really know why. But when I was like, when MJ approached me asking to do it, I was kind of like, I think I could do that. Like, I don't see why not. We're just talking about Kendama kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then like the more we do it, the more I like kind of feel more comfortable doing it. And like... Mm -hmm. It actually makes me more interested in other podcasts just to see like how like our kind of vibe compares to how other people kind of approach it and stuff like that. Mm. I, that's kind of like the cool part of having all these different mm -hmm. um, third media, um, third, pe third party media things mm -hmm. like in Kendama and whatnot, because mm -hmm. everybody kind of has their own vibe to it, their own approach to it. Like we've kind of talked about this before, Adam, where like the, the Brewview versus Dominards, like we offer very similar content. Mm -hmm. But they're very different at the same time. Totally. And like, and same with same with the devil's a, advocate, right? Like, we're getting them yeah, out here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. Yeah. So, okay, I want to know um, a little bit. Uh, so, what were there other things going on at the time when you started Dominards? Was there any other audio formatted com uh, content out there in the Kanama community, or were you guys the first? Because my assumption is you guys were the first, but I could be wrong. There we was were, a few yeah. before us. Yeah, there was, but not like. Like, there's a few that came. Sorry, I'm saying, you go ahead. Go ahead. You, you tell. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> it was definitely Dom, there was Dama Talk with Smith over in, from you mm -hmm. know boss man of, of Terra, and they released one episode with Keith Matsumura, and mm -hmm. then it went silent. <laughs> Is anybody there? Flatline. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For a while, um, and then Haley picked up with Click Clack. Right. And her, mm -hmm. her and Molly went fairly, you know, almost went to like kind of, I think like a season two they, they listed. Um, a lot of the episodes have dropped off if you search on uh, mm -hmm. their podcast. You can still find a few even on YouTube and stuff. Go back, check that mm -hmm. out. But yeah, I think it was just the two. And then I would think, Rod, was there, did Curtis make one too? I don't think so. Did he? I don't know. Curtis has done a lot of talk things on the internet. I, you don't I like Curtis, I don't Curtis Fagan from Fagan, Calgary? Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Yes. Dude, he would, he, I would listen to that podcast, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's a Not Your Mom's House podcast. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, I never heard. Yes, it would be. If you look at the hashtag Kendama podcast, he, and I think it was just called Kendama podcast that he had. Never heard that one, but definitely listen to mm. um, Click Clack and dama talk when they first came out but mm -hmm. then nothing and it stopped and i think we were we kind of picked up the ball yeah so did you guys see that as an opportunity then for you to step in with that other content already rolling uh, or did mm -hmm. you, you like i guess the question i'm asking is like why start a podcast if there were other things happening because i think for so many people myself included like had i known that i was starting a podcast when i started review i wouldn't have done it because i just would have been like oh mm. the dominators <laughs> are already doing this why should i be doing this but i kind of like accidentally stumbled into doing it and so it didn't feel like i was doing a podcast and by the time yeah. that i figured it out i was like i guess i'm already doing it anyway so i might as well keep going <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um i want to know like did you ever feel that way with that content where you saw other people doing it and you were like, eh, do we really need to be doing this if Haley and Molly are doing something similar? I think, I think one of the things that like when MJ approached me with was that uh, I remember talking about these previous podcasts, like platforms that had kind of came and like disappeared a little bit. And he was kind of like, well, like a lot of people have done it, whatever. I want to make one that doesn't disappear. We'll just keep doing it kind mm -hmm. of thing. And that's kind of like where we've been at. It's just like, even if it takes us a little while to get the episode out, we're still, we're still there. We're, the nerds yeah. are always around. Still <laughs> kicking. I love it. Oh, yeah. Hey, I love a it. new one. A new one just went up for the Patreons. Just got it out. Four seven. 
probably yeah i just saw that <laughs> just saw that on the patreon i'm gonna have to take a listen i'm i'm so bad at it. i like i subscribe to your guys's patreon and i almost never watch the episodes early i just wait till they come out on spotify <laughs> and even though i'm like paying for the early access to them i'm like the laziest person ever i'm like ah, i'll just wait till i get the spotify notification and watch it on there <laughs> but oh, i i appreciate it appreciate what you guys are doing okay uh we're we'll we'll wrap this up here in a couple minutes here but i do want to ask a couple questions about the show specifically that if few people were asking beforehand a lot of people wanted to know in your opinion uh what is the best episode in your opinion that you guys have ever done and what is the worst episode that you guys feel like you've ever done not necessarily that the guest was bad or anything but like an episode that you wish you could redo Ooh, yeah i don't want to do any more <laughs> redo <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've done it we've done enough redos we've yes. done enough redos there's been plenty of oh, tech man. troubles we've had in the past where we had to fix like uh like rod had to become like the like, he was like da vinci's coding one whole episode somehow <laughs> yeah which together. is funny because I'm really not much of a computer guy, for those who don't know. I mean, me and computers don't exactly get along. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we talked about this on the last one, so go listen back to that. Um, yeah. But so best and worst, yeah? Yeah, in, in yeah. both of your opinions. You, you can both have your own answers to it, by all means. Mm -hmm. I have a couple that come to mind when I think of, like, the best ones. Can I give you yeah. top three? Ooh, yeah, you're going to have to cut it quick, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Top three for me, and in no particular order, the first ones that come to mind would be the Matt Ballard episode, the Max Norcross episode, and um, oh. uh, uh, okay, those are your top stuck. two. No more, no more, no more. And Reed I was going to say Reed Stark, but okay. Reed Stark, okay. Re that, actually, okay. that was a really good episode. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. Um, what least favorite episode for you, Rob? Least favorite? Oh, or one maybe. that, like, and not, not because of the guests or anything like that. We'll get, mm. push that mentality away. It's not about yeah. who is on. Yeah, no. But it's, just, like, an I don't, I don't think there was. Better. Yeah, maybe that one that I had to piece back together. It was one of our, what, episode three or something like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it, no, it wasn't three, because three was with Sweets. So it was one where it was just the two of us. Yeah. Four okay, and maybe what, what about for you, MJ? But anyway. Um, definitely Matt Ballard. He is one that, like, just to hear the, that backstory is is that hasn't been told unless you knew him personally that is is a mm -hmm. huge key point uh recent one that is one of my favorites is when i talk when we talk with albert jockbert because of mm. his viewpoint of kendama is so different and i really dig all the european homies and and their view on kendama and how they how they uh mm -hmm. play it so those two uh and and jake weens jake weens go back I, when i listen back to yeah. the episode i'm always like man like it's deep. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so those are the three. I mean, even though you only asked for one. And then the worst one, man, I'm going to have to say the first. It's probably the first. I was thinking that, too. I was thinking what, that. What too, was your I first episode? Was it just you guys, or did you have a guest? It was just us. It was just us. Okay. Yeah, our first guest was episode three. So it was probably the first one. We were probably, like, not sure about how to intro, how to outro. It was just, like... <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Well, you guys have a guest. Hey, you guys have nerds. such a science now where it's, like, right at the end, it's, like... And, and nerds are out or whatever. Uh, I, what, what's, what's the, yeah. say it for me, please. I'm just waiting for this on my show. What, what do you guys say? And, and the nerds are out. And on that note. <laughs> oh, the yeah, and out. on that note, the nerds are <laughs> out. <laughs> and the nerds are out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give me a quick snapshot of today's, um, you know, world of entertainment. What exists in it? What are you doing? And how can people get involved uh, with it? Talk about the Patreon. Give us a little sales pitch on everything entertainment, Dom and Nerds, and what's coming next for you guys. And then we'll get the Bevel's Advocate on. Okay, okay. So yeah, Dominers is my YouTube channel that I have been putting content in for a long time. The biggest ones that I was creating weekly in the past before Corona hit and everything. Um, I worked at a company right next to Sue Lab right down the street. So during my lunchtime, I would go over, shoot videos and post them up. So I have the Will It, Will it JKA where I, yeah. do I have a messed up kendama? Yeah, where I grab a weird kendama. Oh, I'm not going to reach it. <laughs> like, like, a toy, like a toy kendama, like a, like ones that you'd find at like a hundred yen store. This oh yeah, like a is that Sambio. plastic? Yeah, full plastic, and the dama is super it, it, heavy. Um, it looks like it's full of like bubbles or something. Like you yeah. should pull the base cup off, and it blows bubbles. Uh, slip stop that guy. 
And so we, we will we do will it JKAs if we pass like the first Q uh, of JKA test. We do Crazy <clears throat> Ken games where I make weird stuff and we put me and Sue and Ayaka play it. Um, and then we do uh, uh, shotgun, shotgun interviews. interviews, short, super quick. I was, you know, lucky to be in Japan. So, so many pros come to me pretty much. So I thought it'd be a good idea to try to quickly <laughs> make this, uh, this interview format where I could just really quickly bang, bang these ep um, episodes or mm -hmm. in interviews out with people. So we got that on um, trying to bring up like uh Dama check, which is like review kind of thing. But like, there's so many people that are doing it. I'm like, mm, maybe it's useful. I'm not sure. Making a few though. Mm -hmm. Um, is that it? Oh, and then I have a few vlogs. I have, you know, the Kendama World Cup vlog right. that went out. Um, the Sue Kendama Festival vlog that's out. And there's a few more in the, the works. The Catch and Flow. The Catch and Flow one. Dude, there's there's a few more in the works. Uh, recently, I, I got three kids now. Um, COVID's been <laughs> difficult on, on me, uh, work-wise and stuff. So there's pressure, but there's still a lot of stuff in the bag that needs to be edited and will be going out. So thanks everyone for the, who's supporting and for the mm -hmm. patience of that. But you know, it's, I'm not, it's not, it's not dead. It's, we're just on a small hiatus, not, not even hiatus. Things are, it's, it's a drip. It's, it's, it's the Enjoy rest it. before the thrive, you know, yeah. just taking that mm. nap so that you can come back even stronger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so, so we got a Patreon and stuff. So yeah. Any, talk any talk to me a little bit. Uh, mm. talk, talk to us about the Patreon because I think a lot of people would only know about your guys' Patreon if they, they're listeners of your show. And I, I'm not sure how much of an overlap there is. I'm sure there's quite a large overlap of people that listen to the Brewview or are connected to mm. the Cafe Kenoma Network as much Definitely. as they are to, to yours. But uh, tell us about the Patreon real quick. Okay, so there are, you know, different ways that you can support us. One is just listening to our episodes. You being like giving reviews on iTunes and stuff. So everyone else can, can find these episodes that we're doing. Um, but another way is to directly support us on Patreon. And it really gives me a, a boost to continue creating this content as well as, you know, paying for some of the things that I need, you know, getting out to events. Well, they used to be. Um, but some of the software mm -hmm. used for editing and whatnot, uh, so that it super helps out. Um, there's th a bunch of different tiers. The first one is just a dollar, so you get video versions of the episodes of Dama Nerds uh, and early access. We got the five dollar tier where you are able to lock in a question for our Dama Nerds guests. We got the ten dollar tier, which you get a shirt, um, as well as all the past perks from you know. One dollar, five dollar, and then the fifteen buck tier, where you get entered into a kendama raffle that happens every month. But I actually got to fix that because uh, Patreon just told me that I'm not allowed to offer raffles anymore. They oh, really? Their, yeah, they changed oh. the rules, so I need to switch that up. Interesting. That's weird. You just got to wow. send them a link every month to a, a third party raffle. And then, so you can send them to another link for a raffle. It's like, you get access at this tier to click on this <laughs> link that will take you to this raffle. It turns into a raffle. Oh, I got to figure, you got to tell me how to do that. Yes, I got to figure that. But, but yeah, that's the gist of the, of the Patreon. But the biggest thing is I'm just, you know, thanks to everyone who, who supports right now. And uh, if you're interested in it, if you like the, this, the content that I'm putting out, then, you know, consider signing up. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much. We're oh, going to yeah. get MJ back on here in a little bit to talk more about a broader conversation regarding third party media. But before you get off of here, uh, MJ and Rod, any last things you want to say before we transition over to the Bevel's Advocate? And I'll ask you, uh, is there one question you want to ask the Bevel's Advocate? Oh. Hmm. So it's a two parter there. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. What do you want to say and what do you want to ask? Oh, man. I want to say, I want to say, enjoy. Hope you, hope you're yeah. caffeinated. Ca hope, hope your mugs are fully caffeinated yeah. and you're ready for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so stupid. And, yeah. then, and, then, and then the stupid question will be, who thought of the name? Whose dad thought of the name? Whose dad thought of the name? Whose the dad dad thought of the name? <laughs> That's a good question. I like it. Rod, do you have anything you want to say? Um, I don't know. I just want to say I love all y'all who play Kendama and who are into this and there's nothing but love. So keep up. Keep cupping. 
Yeah, keep, keep, keep cupping. Whether whether it, whether it be with a kendama or a coffee cup. Or keep cupping. One, keep yeah. cupping. That's going to be my new, uh, my new tagline. <laughs> keep on cupping. Keep on <laughs> there you cupping. go. All right. Hey, guys, do you want to click the little X's <laughs> so you guys can leave? And then I'll get the guys from the Bevel's Advocate on here. And we will chat it up with them for a little bit. And yes, then yes, we're going to get you back, MJ. We're right, bringing we're... you back. And we're going to have a little showdown. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess on that note, the nerds, nerds are out. Absolutely. All right, guys, we are going to get the Bevel's Advocate on here in just a quick second. Big thank you to the nerds for jumping on here at the beginning to share a little bit about their backstory with third-party media, with Kendertainment and the Dominers and what they're doing. If you are listening at this point in the episode, make sure you go also and hit that follow button on their podcast so that you can get notified for when they're dropping new episodes. Go check out their Patreon and go show them some support and some love. They have been doing this for a long time. They have almost, what, 50 episodes or more than that with a lot of your favorite pros and influencers from the community with really detailed backstories. So go check them out. I have had several of the guests that they've had on our show, and we really try to keep the narrative going with a lot of the people that you want to hear about. So go check them out. There's a lot of history on there, and I'm a big fan of their podcast. With that said, let's get the Bevel's Advocate on here and dive into part two here. Tony Stabile, where are you at in my live stream requests i think i found you here as always we are going to have a live q a at the end when we get ryan and mj on here back at the end so stick around to have your questions answered ryan tony hey man how's it going oh my what goodness up? this is this is a treat <laughs> right where, where are you guys uh, logging in from so i'm in orlando florida I'm in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, not New Philadelphia, Ohio, or whatever. Dude, what kind of microphone do you have, Tony? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I was gonna say, does it sound okay? Uh, it Instagram. It sounds amazing. It sounds great. Really? Dude, yeah. it's, it's a, a sweet and supple sound in my ears. Oh my gosh! Oh, fantastic! It's it's right around my 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 throat, so I should probably move the microphone before I take a sip of coffee. Or you'll hear me <laughs> no, no, gulping. No, go ahead, give us give us the full ASMR right now. I, I don't. I think it's like the opposite of ASMR, whatever you call that. Well, we're about to find out, so Give us a little right. Sip. So I'm drinking some um, Home Media Artisan Blend. That was a big uh, gulp. I'm finishing a pot now, and I just drink straight from the pot. So you just drink. So I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not that hardcore. I need to up my coffee game. Yeah. So people, a lot of people are into craft coffee. I'm not. I'll just. I'm. I'm a diner kind of guy, and I just have the way to just continually come over and never bring a new pot. Stop filling my cup up. Yeah. I, you I, just tilt I your head back and open your mouth, and she just yeah. pours it right, yeah. right down your gullet. Yeah, I might as well just be snorting coffee beans. Well, hey, I, <laughs> I'm not opposed to giving a new, new, uh, new method into my routine. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, well, guys, welcome here to the review. I feel like this has been a long time coming. You guys have been killing it over at the Bevel's Advocate, running podcasts there, but also more broad scope. There's the the brand of Hone Media, and Ryan, you you're the guy behind Hone Media. Obviously, right. you have a team that you work with, but you you really kickstarted. Uh, Home Media, which is another third-party media brand in the Kenoma space. Right. And we're, we're going to chat a little bit about that. You already answered my first question of what you're drinking today. So <laughs> let, let's dive in with the same question I asked the nerds. If you could give me a brief one to two sentence description of what Home Media slash The Bevel's Advocate is, maybe that's two different definitions you want to give. Uh, want to kick us off with that? Sure. I would say, uh, to talk about the podcast, I mean, Bevel's Advocate's like a... Uh, I would say a um, unfiltered humor podcast about Kendama, you know, not to be taken so seriously. But Hone Media, you know, started as a Kendama blog, um, which was originally called Skilderness back in the day. But Hone Media was a Kendama blog, but we made some updates and changes now. And now it's a, a uh, full scale marketing agency now that's also branching outside of Kendama. Oh, no way. Mm -hmm. Okay, give, give us a, a brief history then. Catch us up on Skilderness to Hone Media, mm -hmm. kind of similar to what we were doing with Ken Entertainment. And then, right. and then catch me up to why you started The Bevel's Advocate and how that entered. And then yeah. I want to know how you and Tony got into this, this business together. I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Tony so, Serrano. <laughs> so I would say um, Skilderness started a long time ago just as an uh, Instagram account. When I first started playing Kendama, I saw that there wasn't a lot of stuff happening in Orlando, like in Florida in general. And then... Um, uh, I was already 
working in marketing at that time. And I, I already had an art blog I was running from a few years back. And so I figured, you know, I could apply that same kind of stuff to Kendama. And I, I always read magazines when I was a kid. So like uh, all kinds, you know, and so I was always like, where's the Kendama magazine? I can't, can't find that. And people have tried in the past and all this, but you know, Kendama being so small, it's always been kind of difficult to constantly deliver content when it's still being like formed at the same time. And so um, Skillerness kind of became that like a full scale website of, of Kendama content uh, where we were doing Kendama reviews. We, I mean, I wrote some controversial articles back in the day to get it some attention, you know, back in the day. <laughs> what, was it, what was the first one you wrote that was controversial? So, can, can we curse on your show? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll, this I'll, one's hey, Dominar did it. <laughs> gonna this is yeah. going to be an explicit episode. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm in your house, so, but... Um, <laughs> Yet again, Dominards paves the way for us. <laughs> um, uh, so the first one was, why is Kendama apparel so fucking ugly? Okay. And that got posted on <laughs> FKC, and that blew up, and you know, I received a ton of hate for it. However, though, it, it gave us so many, it almost crashed our website with how many people read that article, and then it blew up on Facebook. <laughs> And um, tons of people reached out, you know, being like, oh, you're not being constructive. But I was honest in that article being like, you know, I want to buy Kendama clothes, but I don't like anything that I'm seeing. And so I just thought I'd throw it out there. So, but from that, that's kind of where like the attitude came in, where mm -hmm. I saw an opportunity, like maybe if we just challenge this a little bit more, there might be some, because the, the conversation that happened underneath the, that article, people were agreeing with me, but people were also disagreeing. And it started this whole other thing that, mm. you know, this discussion that people weren't having, everybody was kind of being too polite. And so, um, uh, like, criticism in Kendama is like a touchy subject. And so, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's kind of like where we got the idea for Dama to the death. We just thought that would make a lot of people mad. And then um, now it's like, a huge thing which is crazy mm -hmm. i never would have imagined that ever i was going to mention uh, even even the event dama to the death is kind of right in that same yeah it's that same, in that same vein if you want yeah same attitude yeah and so yeah. like um we just kept kind of doing stuff like that but then we wised up a little bit and saw a real opportunity of like creating good content so we had johnny from um serial kendama writing mm -hmm. reviews for us we were doing interviews with different players. Um, we were making videos, putting up events. We've done so much more events than just Dama to the Death in Orlando. And, you know, I would say Dama to the Death and a lot of the other events and jams we put on brought, the, like, that's what formed the Central Florida community, at least. And we had people driving from both north and south to meet in the middle. And then since, it's become its own monster that, like, we're not just the only thing anymore, which is great. It's grown into this whole ecosystem now here in Florida for Kendama. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a big achievement that, you know, we're proud to be a part of. And then, um, so how we got the Tony, I wanted to start a podcast for a long time, but I had that same issue of how is it going to be different? There's already mm -hmm. podcasts out there, you know? And um, I kind of wanted to do something like my articles. I just felt people read them out of context. And so right. if I put a face to it and, and explained it a little bit better and had other people to go off of, it might be able to make it seem a little bit more disarming. But however- A little more palatable, yeah. yeah. So when it comes to who thought of the name, that was me, so not my dad. <laughs> but, uh, I was, I, was, uh, I, say, I got I was, a kick out of that one, man. I was man. telling Tony this not too long ago. The first name was actually called Speak of the Bevel. Okay. That was, that was the first name. And, <laughs> that's like, we that's shot... also not a bad name. I think not you guys a bad had name. a great podcast name. Right. And because like speak and bevel, you know, and all that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I, uh, we talked about it more and, you know, we kept saying like, oh, you know, every, every article or something like that, you've always played devil's advocate in all these different situ situations, you know. And a lot of the things that, you know, I was saying back then, I didn't really like believe. I just wanted to see there, someone had to like be stoking the fire and I felt like I would just step up to the plate. And so... Um, uh, but we changed it to Bevel as an advocate just because it kind of fell into that same vein. It's a little bit shorter, and it, uh, you know, I just thought it was a great name, and I love the play on words. So, um, so that that's what kind of made it different, though. Yes. Like we're going to be funny. We're not going to take this too seriously. We felt like Dominator has already covered so much history and mm -hmm. talked to so many legendary players. We felt like you know, let's try to bring her some smaller people on, or maybe just me and Tony, um, and just have fun. You know, um, we did Kendama Jeopardy, you mm -hmm. know, and. Uh, uh, you know, just it doesn't even ha it have to be an interview with somebody. It can just be us having fun, screwing around on a on a show, you know, and being able to talk freely and honestly about things. And so, 
that's how yeah. it kind of got started. But it was just me in the beginning. Not a lot of people know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah. So, okay. So, how yeah. did Tony, Tony, give me your side of the story of how you got involved with the Bevel's Advocate? How did that uh, it kind of just, it kind of quite organically, I would say. Um, like, I guess I was really a guest initially, the first couple episodes. It was like me and, and a couple of um, our, I guess, like, most like Dallas was there and it was just people that we knew through Kendama that we interacted with. We had, was it through the group chat, the, the Florida group chat Something originally like that, that you, yeah. and then, like, I think they knew, we, we had they a, knew me and I didn't know you, I met you that day. Right. But I mean, when, when you reached out about the podcast, I think it was just in that Florida group chat and I just happened to see it and was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do that. And mm -hmm. I just ended up being there every time he needed a guest. And right. then after a couple episodes, he just Ryan messaged me and was like, Hey, would you want to, you know, make it a, an official thing. And I, I enjoyed doing it already. You know what I mean? I was just in it for, because I, you know, because I enjoyed it. So it was a pretty, uh, pretty easy choice. Were, were you nervous of associating yourself with the brand of Ryan Reese being known as the FKC disruptor, <laughs> the, the controversial article writer, you know, Ryan Reese. You Honestly, know, I think, this, I think this pleasant fellow to chat with him <laughs> strikes controversy everywhere he goes. <laughs> right. Well, I, I kind of had a reputation in a similar vein, at least in like the FKC myself, just for being not necessarily instigating, maybe, maybe in the past a little bit of instigating, but I just, you know, I always kind of just spoke my mind in, in particularly really, in the FKC. I like that Tony wasn't afraid. Uh, mm. And he already kind of had that behind him. And it seemed like he had thick skin. And sure, sometimes he's a <laughs> jerk. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I thought, you know, it might be a good dynamic, you know, and you know, we had that kind of a uh, same mentality. And so, yeah, I didn't really have to switch brands or anything like that. Right, you know, it was pretty right. much how I already was. Right. So. I just wanted Tony as he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come as you are, Tony. Yeah, Come yeah as exactly. You are. Okay, so talk to me about the early start to The Bevel's Advocate. What was some of the early response? Because I remember, like, and I mean, people could go back and look at the early posts. There were both encouragement and other people that were like, eh, I don't know about yeah. this so much. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, yeah. you've well, you can't go back good. and look at all of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there, there are some things that didn't didn't make it. <laughs> there were some redactions, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But, but the early days, I mean, so it, I wasn't going to wait. I'm the kind of person, you know, I'm not going to wait for anybody to get it done. You know, I, I pretty much rely on myself if anything's ever going to get done. And so I figured if I'm going to start this, I'm going to start it now. And if it's just going to be me kind of just going off, you know, like I said, it was kind of supposed to be like my articles, like from my voice, just like that, you know. And um uh, so I would just basically talk to myself about different uh, subjects and, you know, I was really just trying to be honest and I, I figured that a lot of people wouldn't, you know, mesh with it, which is fine, you know, but it doesn't, there's a whole nother market to claim of listeners who I thought would mm. get a kick out of it at least, you know, and it's kind of an alternative to the other podcasts, you know, which, cause that's the thing, like I wanted to be different and, you know, like, Hey, there's enough to go around for everybody. If this isn't for you, there's dominards and of course is what you do. And then, Hey, if that's not for you, there's at least this, you know, and it's something, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, so yeah, those early episodes was just me and I would really, and, and I also did like skits and stupid shit in it too. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I played different voices and all that. I had to get creative because I didn't really have like, a. uh, uh, a guest or a host or anything mm -hmm. like that. And so a lot of those, you know, were really just me having fun, but a lot of people took it seriously. And so uh, it, it kind of There got are still some lingering it. rough sentiments, I think, yeah. amongst some people. Yeah. They still feel... So, so I saw that, you know, and I, <clears throat> I did a few, I did like seven or eight episodes like that. And um, there's one I, my one I did was... Uh, yeah, yeah, Zay just brought it up in the, the comments there. Uh, the, there's one where I die at the end of coronavirus, and a lot of people <laughs> didn't like that. And so, which I understood. I think that was the last one where I was like, you know what? I need to like step up my game and kind of listen to the audience here and um, get over myself and like add a host. Let's get some guests. We can do it over Zoom. Yeah, have someone else in there to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to, that to at least down. be like, to, yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah, put a yeah. leash no on this guy. Me. That was the thing. No one was stopping me. There was no one. They just needed to something, something to dilute it a little right. bit, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we also didn't have video then either. So when we right. started using Zoom to record the show, I could have an audio version and a video version. And I think that kind of shows uh, 
a good dynamic of the guests and Tony and me, you know, putting a face to it. And it, it could probably help with some nuance, I would yeah. think. I think so, yeah. right? Because because that does that does make a difference. People have such a hard time reading tone through message, uh, a text, right? So text, I can imagine right. your articles and your posts on FKC. Obviously, like people have such a hard time interpreting tone, and so right. if they don't yeah. understand, it's either satirical or that it's meant to be humorful. That it could be taken the wrong way or over seriously, mm -hmm. as, yeah. as you've defined. And mm -hmm. at the same time, like audio, if you don't have a visual to know that the guy's smirking or like holding back a smile as he's <laughs> yeah. saying what he's saying, right, right. it's kind of hard to know whether or not is, is Ryan Reese being legit here or is he trying to make a joke about something? Right, right. And that was yeah, the I, I don't know. You always know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> right. to, yeah that's the sense of humor that I have, though. It's, it's, you can't tell if I'm really serious or joking or not. So I, I just try to be. But I, that, that's kind of the, the humor that I like. I mean, I think that's funny when you can't tell the difference. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to shed that brand out of curiosity? Like with, with the negative responses you have gotten, has that ever encouraged you or made you question like, okay, maybe, maybe I should take a different approach to things. Or have you just been like, nah, screw it. Like I'm, no, I'm just going mean, to do and be me. Sure. I mean, everything I, I do, I want it to be successful like anybody else. And you know, my goal isn't to hurt people's feelings or anything like that. It's always been in fun. I've always tried to think of it like that. And I just think Kendama culture in whole has this issue of lingering on this elementary vibe, you know, that it's a children's toy and we need to respect it from this, you know, 15, 18 and under kind of thing when that's just not true anymore. And mm. it's, it's an adult thing as well. And so or, or it's matured, you know? And so um, I just figured, you know, for, and it also, cause my biggest fear for Kendama in general is that people stop playing. And so as mm. people get older, they see this as, you know, I get it all the time from my family. Like, you still play with that thing, you know? And I, I try to tell them, like, hey, this is more than just that. You know, you don't know the culture behind it and, like, what I really do in it and all this. And so, um, you know, I've always just tried to, like, okay, how can we keep thinking forward of how we can keep people playing, keep people interested, you know, and not hearing the same thing over and over and only focusing on the same people, you know, and, you know, Kendama, this used to be Skilderness's tagline was Kendama is not all about the tricks. There is mm. so much more to it. And, you know, and it, it's still growing. It's still in such a fertile state mm -hmm. of time. You know, it seems like it's been around forever now. It's compared to most things, not even close. At you least know, in its so, modern form, right? Because, I mean, right. Kendama is like yeah. 200 oh, years old or whatever. Course, but, like, right. in its modern right. legacy of what Kendama is as a culture, in mm -hmm. its sport, or at least in its Western sport, uh, it's very mm -hmm. new. We're less than, what, 12, 13, 14 years? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and it seems to just be snowballing. The, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like exponential over, yeah. mm -hmm. over that period of time. I think Kendama's at the best it's ever been. The shapes, the players, the tricks are insane. Yeah. If you showed me those tricks yeah. just, just two, three years ago, I'd be like, no way. That used to be like a joke trick. And I'd like, say someone, in, you know, <laughs> like, this is the, like, you know, just the fuck around with them but like now stuff like cloud bounces and taps mm -hmm. 30 40 taps like i remember when two taps was crazy you know i still so, think two tap is crazy it is crazy right <laughs> right, right. <laughs> try and do one they're still hard has so many areas to go in and i kind of wanted to be kind of forge that side of it you know so mm. but I, do i ever want to change that not really because it's been successful for us like Dominance of the Death is like a huge hit all of a sudden. And like mm. three was the biggest one yet. And we've had people fly internationally for that one. Mm. And I couldn't believe it really. And so like, that's why we're doing four now in November and all this, yeah. and, you know, that was like, that event originally started as a joke. And now it people, I found an audience in there who was like, no, this is how I, I never competed in the contest, but this one I come for knowing I'm gonna lose, knowing my Dom was gonna burn. It's the atmosphere yeah. and it's fun because I don't know if you've been to other Kendama events, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, babysitting fifth grade, you know, mm. and early, it's like <laughs> Little League, you know, and I kind of wanted to shed that part of Kendama, you know, and, and if you don't like it, it's not for you and that's okay. You know, I've never gone after anybody who hasn't liked it. That's their thing. You know, there's plenty of things I don't like and I just think it needs to be fair and across the board. Totally. Cool. Hey, well, let's talk a little bit about the podcast and some of the episodes that you guys have done. Uh, catch me up on what you think is your favorite episode, your least favorite episode, both of you guys. And, uh, and then tell me kind of like, what, what do you look forward to with the Bevel's Advocate? Because you guys have been kind of dark for a couple months now. December mm -hmm. was the last episode. It's like, right. did, did Isaac do you dirty or what? Nah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was our worst episode right, <laughs> right. there. Isaac. No. <laughs> no, we're just uh, super lazy and... <laughs> 
I, I've yeah. recorded stuff. I just haven't edited it or whatever. Or we have. We did yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it, that's the thing. It's like um, Bevel's Advocate is kind of like the last thing on my list. Not saying it's not a priority or anything like that. But, you know, it's something we do for fun. You know, it's not a professional thing. It's not, you know, it, it's really more of like hanging out. It always has that vibe of like hanging out with people and, you know, like I want to do more games and stuff like Kendama Jeopardy. We want to do like a Wheel of Fortune one and all this. And I think the games are fun. Um, you know, we still we're, we're planning a season two that's coming up. That's a little bit more organized and different. Uh, Marley, who's my partner with Home Media, you mm -hmm. know, he's kind of coming on as like the show's producer. He already has a whole Excel sheet of like guests, dates, things like that. And so we're really just trying to organize it so it's not so off the cuff like it has been in the beginning. It's a more organized, formulated thing. And it's just taken a long time because we all work and all this. And so um, the show's still there and I still like to post about it. And I still like that branding and vibe of it and the name. Mm -hmm. I can't let that name ever go. So, uh, <laughs> no, so, so we're going to be doing this till we die just because right, it's probably. a good <laughs> Yeah. But um, favorite episode would have to be probably Kendama Jeopardy. That was too funny. That was too much fun. And that was just, That's I good. loved it because it was just people like, we got uh, Cody on there, who's just a normal player. We just went into FKC and was like, hey, does anybody want to come on the show tonight? And he was like, sure, I'll be there. I didn't even know who he was. But he showed up and did the whole game with us and everything. And I still talked to him. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, and so like that was really cool. Um, worst episode for me would probably be uh, the early ones. Just because like it looked... I, I, I can't even listen to them now. I cringe, but... Uh, I can't listen to any of my episodes. I hate yeah. hearing back my voice. It is like a, a fear of mine. I upload <laughs> things so quickly. I don't, I don't edit. I, like, I just don't do it. Yeah. Oh, um, man. Yeah. And then, uh, but there's also been some other episodes where we, we, like, we, have, to let, we have to make people sign a uh, release form now yeah. when they come on the show. Yeah. Because there's been some, some things that have happened to where it's like, hey, now that I've done the show, I don't want this put out. And I didn't, I, I couldn't hold them to anything. So like a release. And so, but you know, since we've done that, since we put it out there, everyone understands, you know, kind of like what to expect. And so most people sign the release forms. Right. Uh, can we, can we get a verbal <laughs> right. release here that I'm allowed to upload this afterwards? Uh, <laughs> yes. You are. May, may, not, may not hold up in court. I, I don't try. know. <laughs> I'm, I mean, it's I Canadian. It's a Canadian so produced podcast. We do things differently up here. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> on trust right. um tony what about you uh what do you what do you think is the best episode what yeah least favorite for you so i've i've had some time to think about it we had that benefit i'm glad that actually ryan i thought he might end up saying some some of the same things as me but he had different ones so that's good um i would say my favorite was probably i mean i, I might be missing other ones that were good I'm, I'm sure i am but i really enjoyed talking to johnny from serial he he was just he had such an interesting perspective on it all and he's such a nice guy and um yeah it was just it was great and i i uh i enjoyed talking to him but he's, uh, he's a beauty first off like I, I need to get him on the show at some point he's a man he really is uh he's such yeah. a warm-hearted community-centric guy he's very active on the forums very active in serving people and anybody who's ever crossed his path just knows how much he loves this game and the people that are in it. Like big shout out to yeah. Serial Kendama. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, John is a huge supporter of Kendama Media and he writes a good blog on uh, Serial's website too. You know? Oh, I, I haven't read his, but he does yeah. all of your guys' blogs on your Kendama reviews, right? For uh, yeah, he, he, he did most of them. Yeah. Okay. But no, we, we, just, we discontinued those since, so. Uh, I was anymore. gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Why, why did you choose to do that out of curiosity? So um, the thing was, is that we've always struggled to like maintain, I mean, there's been so many times and I'm sure there's a lot of Kendama brands and companies that can say this, like we've almost gone under so many times. And, um, you know, we sell Kendamas through our collaboration with Seoul. You know, we, we make a little bit of money on our events, but like, you know, as you probably know, Kendama Media is extremely hard to make money with. Dude, and you so... haven't seen my Bugatti in my garage? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, it's, and a lot of people think, you know, by the way we look or what we do, we, they think we're like, we're a million dollar company and it's not even close to that, you know? <laughs> and so, it's like people people have like DM'd us about that before, you know? And like I remember we are we did a hundred dollar cash prize for Dama to the Death Three and people were like, Wow, that you're a big company and all you're offering the winner is a hundred dollars. You guys can easily do ten thousand and I'm like you have no idea what you're talking about. That's my hundred dollars right there. 
You know, yeah, you're like, I, I don't even have that's ten thousand dollars. People think that you make that much money. I like know it for okay. Maybe I'm I understand it a bit more because I do it a little bit on my mm -hmm. side, and I don't I. I've put in more money than I will make back in in quite some time from the yeah. podcast and the blog. I, I spend money every month on website hosting that doesn't get paid back. Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> I, I know you know. And yeah. It's, um, and I'm sure Rod and MJ understand too. It's like that's why you guys have like Patreons and different yeah. other ways to, uh, you know, make, make a little bit of money or at least be able to pay your hosting fees, you mm -hmm. know. So, on right. top, so from that, you know, we tried our best with we ran ads on the website which mm. made it look like crap. And then we had a <laughs> shop, which, you know, was always kind of hard to get people to, you know, purchase from. And then, you know, our online or our uh, in-person events, you know, take a lot of time and resources and manpower and volunteers and this and that, uh, that, you know, at the end of the day, those barely may just break even. And so we were just kind of, you know, me and Marley were just kind of like saying like, hey, we got to like find the best parts about this and only focus on those. And, you know, that's probably where our success is going to lie. Mm -hmm. So um, I work in marketing and advertising outside of Kendama. And so I just looked at the big picture here and I just said, okay, we just need to turn into like a digital marketing agency where we can provide what we do in Kendama for other people. Our SEO on the website because of the blog post, oh my God, we had the first page of almost any Kendama search, you know, and mm -hmm. we get drowned out by, of course, big companies like Sweets and Kendama USA with like, what is Kendama posts mm -hmm. and all that. But when it came to like all these other things, you know, we definitely reigned in that part. And, I, and people were asking us like, hey, can you write blogs for us? You know, I've been approached by Sweets. We've been in talks with Kendama USA, um, obviously with Soul Kendamas. You know, they've, we've had meetings with all of them talking mm -hmm. about like, hey, how can you do this? What you guys do for Hone Media for us? And it was just, again, they didn't have a lot of money either. For no, and, and people don't understand do. that either, right? People mm -hmm. people look at these big Kanala brands, they're like, oh, they must be just rolling it. But, right, but, right. But they put like everything that they make back into their next order. Right. And maybe a couple of the big companies like Sweets or Chrome or Kanama USA have a cash flow now that actually mm -hmm. is positive, whereas a mm -hmm. lot of the other brands are just reinvesting everything back in. They don't, they don't have a lot of spare change for advertising. Exactly, right. Or if they do, it's yeah. all in-house or something yeah. like that. You you know, and so, um, but I think they do know it's important. And so I just looked at the, the big picture, like I said, and, you know, um, we were already doing so much collaborations with Chad and Shelton from Soul Kandamas that, you know, we just spoke with them about certain things. And we just said, hey, we want to take you guys on as our only Kandama client. And we're going to, you know, discontinue a lot of the other stuff that we do for Kandama. And we just want to focus on Soul because, one, we have, like, our collabs with you. And mm -hmm. then two, it's like, I think Chad and Shelton have been the most open with and receptive of what like I've had to offer, you know, and a, a big part of what we do is like, you know, it's a, uh, uh, like a personal brand really. So like behind the scenes with them, they've kind of seen that and understood it. And so now we're, um, you know, focusing a lot of that energy for like, like if you go look at the soul blog, I've been writing, I've written the past 10 blogs on the soul uh, mm -hmm. website and, um, so there's that, and then we have some future things working with them as well coming up. But uh, it's funny, talking about coffee, I was in a meeting yesterday, and um, we're about to sign our first coffee shop. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, and so, like, so that's the thing, though. It's like, do you, 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 you want to outsource a ghostwriter? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. We're going to need somebody who knows about coffee, yeah, yeah. Right. And, um, but that's the thing, like, so, like, Soul's just our Kendama account where mm -hmm. we now get a little bit of cash flow from them, what they can afford. But then, like, we also have a financial planning uh, service that um, pays us. And then also, we just got this coffee account. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, on top of that, like, all those together, like, we're almost at, like, $1,000 in billings every month, which was, we were doing $50 a month, like, three months ago. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, like, just making that swift transition has already, you know, mm -hmm. and I hate to make it about money, but at the end of the day, I've been doing this for, like, five years now and it's just like people ask me all the time what is your motivation for all this like all these people hate you your stuff doesn't make any money why do you keep doing it and it's really because i love kendama and it's it's just, just stubborn you know, yeah and that maybe but he's just know. still wanting to be loved <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, it's a personal you know, thing <laughs> I, I just think if, 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 if we stick to it it'll that's the biggest thing kendama's had so many people drop off and the biggest part i think no matter what we do is just sticking with it and uh, it'll, it'll come through at the end of the day. 
Yeah, and, and that's what I definitely want to talk about when we get MJ back on here is like all three of us are doing this very much out of passion for the game. I, I would imagine, unless the dominators yeah. are just rolling in it, which I don't imagine is the case for anyone <laughs> doing third-party media in Kendama. And maybe five years from now, if Kendama hits a 10x boom, that our our media might have an income generation that is feasible to keep on full time. Who knows? Possibly right yeah. now. No, like, nah, nah. I don't think that's possible. I don't think there's enough revenue going around in the Kanama world that that even could trickle down to us to make a difference in our in our monthly income to be feasible to do part time, full time, whatever that looks like. And right. and I'll, I'll chat a little bit about my revenue and kind of how I've been able to make uh, what I'm doing a little bit more feasible through my partnerships that I do with Soul right. and other brands and you name it. Uh, we'll talk about that, about that a little bit in uh, the second half here, but um, we, we will wrap this up because we're about to hit that one hour mark. And so I do want to leave uh, okay. this section here by asking, you know, what do you want to say, uh, Tony, Ryan, as we wrap up the first half to the Kanama community? And I think I had the question to the Dominators, but it's kind of weird to ask in retrospect, but if you could ask the Dominators a question, what would you ask them? Mm. Tony, you go first. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, I feel like I've cheated before with the preparation and I, I figured I wasn't going to have to ask this question. Um, mm. Let me see. Um, I mean, it, cause it's like, you can't really ask them about like, who would you like to have on or something? Cause they, they've had practically everybody. I mean, they, they don't, yeah. <laughs> we have a uh, bit of a, bit of a branding issue in that regard where some of the more high profile people can be a little bit tough to right. get on. Yeah. There's been plenty been um, projected by plenty of people, by the way. Yeah, I don't definitely. know if that ever happens to you. <laughs> uh, all right. Well then, it, okay, it speaking yeah. of rejection, how about since everything seems to go in a lot of ways fairly smoothly for them, at least as far as booking people, what would be like um, one of the, the challenges maybe that, that they have um, mm. in their position specifically? Yeah. Mm. I would say, um, uh, it's more of a comment. If you want to talk about names, um, the thing about dominators for me is uh, I don't like to consider myself a nerd. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I, that's the, that's the one thing with my the problem I have with their branding is uh, you know I'm, I'm I don't consider myself a nerd, but uh, so I for one am extremely cool. <laughs> right, right, I'm cool. Like that's, that's <laughs> to I'm too cool for it. So, yeah. Maybe yeah. if they made a people who are actually really cool and have a lot of friends, yeah. then yeah, maybe it'd be right. different. Absolutely. <laughs> um, is there anything you'd like to say to the Kanama community before you jump off here, Tony? And then yeah, I skipped, you the, can also skipped over that one a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, just like thanks for for watching uh, for watching this and our podcast to whatever uh, overlap there there is there. Yeah. Um, if you don't already and you're interested in, in something a little bit more with a little bit more of a, a bite to it, <laughs> a little more of an edge, maybe, right. maybe check our stuff out and uh, yeah. keep session time because it's fun. Yeah. Mine is um, who did it better with the, the glasses and Balcom hat, me or Adam? <laughs> Wait, is that a Balcom hat as well? Oh my gosh. Sure is. <laughs> did you plan that? Did you know I was going to be wearing this? Of course, man. Of course. <laughs> Brian's <laughs> always ready with a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is what I love about your guys' show. You always have some bit prepared for it. I don't prepare anything. Like, I'm the most unprepared this guy. person going into my episodes. I wing most of what's going on. I yeah. maybe plan a little bit of an outline, but I, I just hope that something <laughs> cool comes out every time. Right, right. That's yeah, I just job, fly man. by the seat of my pants. Yeah, yeah you did a great you, job. Hey, well. It doesn't show for you anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I, I appreciate it. Uh, all right. Well, hey, Tony, can I kick you off here if you want to hit that X? And we're going to get MJ back on here. And we're going to have a little Rochambeau or Rumble Ooh. in the Rotunda or whatever they call it. <laughs> call it. I don't know. I, don't, I, I didn't think of a good catchphrase yet. <laughs> all right. Well, I like that. You got a sec. I'll, I'll switch to spectating here. I want to. I'm rooting for you, Ryan. Yeah, Absolutely. Thanks. And then we're going to get MJ back on here once we... Where are you, Dominards? Beauty. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to be on here today. Oh, absolutely. Any day, man. I was waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. MJ, welcome back. Thanks. Welcome back. All right, guys, here's what I want to do in this second half of the episode here tonight. Hey, also, I wanted to check in. How are you doing with your drink there, MJ? Dude, it's, go it's going well. I actually, Dude. I actually paused so I could just, you know, enjoy... <laughs> the talks from Ryan and Tony. Ryan, by the way, we haven't met personally, so 
you know, virtual handshake. What is up, dude? Yeah, nice. Definitely uh, been been a fan and been following since Skilderness. I remember you yeah. jamming Ken games with Miguel back in right. the day. So yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know you've been there. Yeah, and it's funny. You supplied some art for the zine that we did for NAKO. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember yes. that magazine. Uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, MKO 2018. I remember people were walking around trying to hustle these skilled in this magazine. Yeah. <laughs> what the crap is this? Right, right. <laughs> and right. I took one. I took one because I was like, it was my first time at a major Konam event. And I yeah. thought it was the coolest thing ever that someone made magazines for this event. Anyway, right, I thought right. it was so cool. Right, right. And again, it was one of those things like Konam Media, even in that print form as well, that we wanted to try. So yeah, mm -hmm. so we thought uh, like an NAKO, like event program magazine would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so here, guys, this is what I want to talk about in the second half. Obviously, I want to bring the conversation back to third party media in Kanama, talk about what each of us see in the community as non necessarily brand affiliated companies, though we all do have our slight affiliations with specific brands. We I think each of us do try to remain fairly brand neutral in terms of how we present our individual platforms, or at least our shows that we run. We, we're obviously servicing a lot of different communities through it. But I want to ask a couple questions and, and journey through them a little bit. You know, what is missing in the space of third party media from our perspectives? You know, we've all been doing this for a little bit. Uh, what are some of the challenges of being independent? Kind of talking through, you know, what you were saying, Ryan, is like, there's not a lot of money in this. And it right. is a challenge. It's hard to dedicate the amount of time and energy and effort to building these platforms when there isn't much of a reward for it, aside from maybe that personal heart thump. Uh, and, you know, is it sustainable for us? What does it look like to make it sustainable? And what do we need to do? Or what do we need to ask of the Kanam community to fill the gaps to make this important? So those are some of the questions. And then ultimately, like, you guys can let loose, fire some questions back at me, fire questions at each other, and we'll, uh, we'll have a little virtual boxing match at the end or some. I think people right. are waiting for it. We're going right. to duke it out to see. <laughs> 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 I put a poll up on my story beforehand. I was like, who, oh, yeah, who would yeah. win in a cage match? The Brewview Cafe, or the Brewview, yeah. the Dominards, or the Bevel's Advocate? And I was like, yeah. if people vote for me, they're picking the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah you're the someone. referee. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. come in, I'm like, hey guys, we're gonna right. yeah. just, just trying to drink my cup of coffee here. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll just leave. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So, okay, first off, I want to know perspective before we jump in. Are there any questions that you guys want to hit on as we talk about this? I want to make this very community focused. Sure, sure. Like, um, first of all, I think sustainability is a good one. You know, like, how, how do we make money? And like, you guys do it differently than I do, you know? Mm. And, um, you know, like, uh, I think accessibility to content is, is important. Like, um, we thought about doing a paywall back in the day to, like, become, a, like, do you have to subscribe to Hone Media to read the content? You get one article for free or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we tossed that idea around, and we just, people we knew just weren't going to do it. And so it had to be always accessible. And so that was, that was a big thing. I think you both have really cool models for how you have accessibility stuff. Like, even with Dominards, how you guys, I think it's the audio is free, but the video is what you pay for, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's cool. And then for you, Adam, it's what's the Patreon like? What what do you get with that, dude? They just support me because they love me. Right, <laughs> no. right. So so there yeah. you go. Like you're Which just saying a, yeah. like, hey, if you like, it's kind of like just like a tip jar, you know. And so mm -hmm. and that, that was the one thing like I've never gone to that, and I've, I've I've considered it and all this, and we've tried everything else. But the biggest part for me was always just you know create engaging and good content that's obviously different and entertaining. And um, if you wanted support, like, like I said, we were in talk with different talks with different companies, you know, they told us, you know, like, hey, you're going to have to tone it down. You're going to have to kind of listen to us. You're going to have to. And I totally understood. And um, I just felt, you know, like, how are we going to be authentic still to how we feel about this? And how are we not just helping these companies market products? And so um, and that's where I felt like, you know what, content is king. Focus on the content. It'll gain an audience. You know, if you build it, they will come. It's just going to take mm -hmm. time and hard work. I'm sure you both understand that. So, yeah. But I think our models are interesting of how, it, uh, how, how we do try to make some money off of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what do you think about that, MJ? Do you, do you see a world in the near future where Kendertainment slash uh, Dominards becomes a, 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 a significant amount of income for you to be able to live off of? Or maybe it's already there and I don't know. You know, is it, is it a place that you see in the future as accessible for you? I, I do. I think it is. Uh, there's a lot of uh, types of vloggers that I am definitely a big fan of. Um, I want to go and I want to support 
artists and people that I enjoy what they do. Um, and, you know, I know that Ryan, you play music, right? So yeah, yeah. that is a definitely thing that I grew up with, the DIY hardcore heavy metal lifestyle where when I go out to see a band, like you go to support everyone on the lineup. You go, you definitely get some merch, not only makes you exciting you know you you remember that night you went out and you got your nose busted in that pit but you're also supporting the the band because they're all similar to kendama and what we're doing it, very underground bare bones is what they're rolling mm -hmm. with you know right on on fumes they're going on fumes so right then i support those people there's plenty of patreon uh the people that I support through uh, d different like podcasts or there's a heavy metal um, mm -hmm. YouTube channel that I, that I support and just being able to help them out. I see other people as well, joining the community and mm -hmm. helping each other out. And through that, I believe that this is something that can be sustainable in the future. Again, uh, you know, all this, all these kinds of things like YouTube creating content, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. We're going to have to be going in it for a long time and just continue to push the content out. Um, mm -hmm. So I believe that people will enjoy this kind of stuff. You look at the world nowadays, dude, everyone's stuck on their device because mm -hmm. you don't have to, your computer is now on your phone. That's why it's like a thousand bucks, right? So everyone's not watching the TV anymore. All the content that people are taking in are, is through SNS and is through whatever kind of like influencer they're following. So they have so much more control. So there's so many different types of mm -hmm. small podcasts that are very specific. Right. Oh, different yeah. types of things. And, right. and Ours that, all would fall in that category. Like yeah. we're, we're in a niche industry doing niche podcasts in that industry. It's right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. It, right. What that's just what we are. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think a big part of it too is, you know, like compared to other industries, like if you want to say skateboarding or skiing or something like that, or like water sports or something like Kendama, its economy, even if it was a billion people all over the world playing, you got to remember those billions of people are buying something that can be sold for fourteen ninety nine, you know? And so it's not like they're buying a $300, you know, snowboard you know, or something like that, or like wakeboards are super expensive or skateboarding can be an expensive endeavor too. Yeah. And there's so many sub markets in that, like helmets mm -hmm. and pads, um, you know, water sports, you need a boat, you know, and those are all big ticket items where Kendama at the like, point of sale is already yeah. like a cheap commodity. I know there's expensive ones, but mm -hmm. those are like considered boutique, whereas like the average mm -hmm. player probably spends what, 30 to $50 on one setup. And, even if you buy a bunch of kendamas, it's still only like probably going to be under 300 bucks or something like that. And so mm. when the companies see that spread across, you know, the budgets are still low of where they can spend it on uh, content or advertising or whatever, mm. you know. And so it's still, I think it's going to be a while before, you know, anybody mm. really starts making any money. Uh, well, especially outside of the brands, right? The brands mm -hmm. that are actually selling the commodity because we are like the adjacent commodity mm -hmm. in terms of right. where we are because we're like the end of the funnel in terms of how someone comes to Kendama. It's like they get introduced by an influencer who shares Kendama with them, say like Mr. Boogie T or whatever. Right. And mm -hmm. they come, they play Kendama, they buy a Kendama, they buy a couple, they start posting on Instagram. Next thing they know, they're like, oh, wait, there's these guys doing these podcasts, interviewing some of these other people I follow. I should go check right. that out. We're right. not front of mind when people come to Kendama. It's not like, hey, let me go look up podcasts and niche communities and find these, these Kendama <laughs> yeah, podcasts. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then I'm going to go buy a Kendama and Certainly, then I'm going to yeah. join the community. That doesn't happen. We're bottom of funnel. So we are not at the front force of collecting anything from that frontline revenue. It's like maybe down at the very bottom where we get a little bit of that. Right, 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 right. It definitely yeah. trickles down, yeah. And I think if you like Kendama enough, you can seek it, you know. Um, we've had some new players listen to Bevel's Advocate and, you know, like right off the bat, like, oh, I only started playing three months ago. And they're suddenly, mm -hmm. you know, but I think those are, that was somebody who, like, probably was already listening to podcasts and was like, let me see if there's any Kendama podcasts. And they go to Apple Podcasts, type that in. They probably see uh, all yours first and then mine at the very bottom of that page, probably. <laughs> And so, um, but, you know, I think that, again, if you, if you keep doing it, there, there will be the right people who will find it.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm always curious to find out if other people, if there's been anyone that's found any of our podcasts by accident and started listening and then picked up Kendama. I, I, if, if that's yeah, happened, yeah. it's less than 1%. <laughs> like it's yeah. so small, but I, I hope and I believe that in the future that that could happen. And I have some ideas that I'm thinking about that I want to start, you know, getting into. And what part of me is like, okay, what you were doing, Ryan, with Hone Media, you've transitioned to doing, you know, more creative marketing for non just Kendama related brands. Mm -hmm. I've thought about introducing podcast episodes with other people from niche industries, say like what I did with oh, an yeah. episode with Alex from, uh, yeah. Oddball Sports, and he does, right? yeah, he does stuff oh. with um, uh, Bocce Ball, and I was like, okay, let's do an episode with him and start right. to bridge those communities, and then perhaps we can start getting some people from other communities to come into Kendama through the podcast and right. do that every now and then. That that's been some of my like inkling of thought, and yeah. who knows, we'll see if yeah. that pans out in the future. I definitely think you're on the right track. I mean, we, like I said, we're talking about season two with our show, and we're thinking about doing that same thing as well. Like that's going to be like our main Kendama. Uh, like content push will be Bevel's Advocate. Like we're doing stuff with Soul, but like that's for them, you know? Like mm -hmm. when I write posts for them, I do it in their brand voice or they, I, they say I can be a little loose for it, but with it, but I try to, you know, respect their brand and give them the best work I can when it comes to their stuff. So when it comes to us engaging with uh, Kendama, the, the Kendama community specifically, it's going to be Dama to the Death and the Bevel's Advocate. You know, those are our top two things that, we feel like we can offer that are different and they only mm -hmm. ha they have their own audience. And so, but we did want to introduce, like, um, we want to have a metal band at Dama to the Death and like, hey guys, promote this, you're playing this on your feed. So people come see the metal band, yeah. but then they get exposed to like, what is this Kendama burning event? What is this thing, you know? Yeah. And so like, that would like, um, with Dama to the Death 4, we're reaching out to like hot sauce companies and, um, you know, we're thinking about doing a benefit for the Orlando Fire Department. And so maybe they can come bring a fire truck, you know. Nice. And, yeah. uh, but, like, hopefully they can, you know, we can get involved with the city a little bit more as, like, a community mm -hmm. event. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. Yeah. And um, um, maybe there can be different sponsorships through that or different awareness or different people engaging with this besides just hardcore Kendama players who have seen mm -hmm. it on Instagram, you know. So I think yeah, you're on the right yeah. track with that. I, I encourage you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, maybe, maybe uh, unless you want to touch on that a little bit, MJ, if you have some thoughts there, I do have a question afterwards, I'll ask. Uh, well, personally, at least for, for the nerds, like, my goal is to just uh, uh, talk to as many OGs as possible to bring the history, the roots to some of the newer players so they can hear what it was like, um, then possibly go back, you know, do a little history research. Um, and I, I definitely am, am more, at least for, for Dama Nerds, definitely on the side of a podcast for the players, like, who are in it. Mm -hmm. The hardcore nerds. Again, that's why I like nerd. Like, come on, Ryan, I'm such a nerd. Like, growing up on anime and manga and stuff, like, dude, getting yeah. to, like, idols and stuff now, it's like, I'm a nerd. No, the nerds have won. <laughs> when, when it comes to the, 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 being a nerd today is the, the best thing you could possibly be. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I, I think about like comics back in the day, how like you were a dork if you read any comics and you were not right. cool and that yeah. stuff didn't make a lot of money. And who would have imagined the way that like superheroes and being right, a comic Marvel. book nerd is like the, one of the most profitable things ever. And so, right. I mean, Kendama has a chance one day, you know, I'm waiting for Kendama movies, Kendama celebrities. <laughs> You know, Kendama comics, well, we need it all. I, I think one of the breakthroughs for Kendama, in terms of it just like hitting a new wave of influence is the day that Red Bull comes in and is like, all right, we're going to sponsor a team of athletes right. and put the Red Bull logo on them. We're going to run a Red Bull Kendama event or whatever mm -hmm. that looks like. You yeah. know, because yeah. Red Bull just takes all of these niche industries that they touch and turn them into macro industries right. that have hundreds of thousands of viewers. Right. It's yeah. We reached yeah. out to Red Bull about sponsoring a bunch of our events and they said, this isn't for us. Yep. Um, so Red Bull, <laughs> Red Bull JP, Japan, Nobu, you know, from Decade 430, uh, MC of Catch and Flow World Cup. He works closely. You know, he is a big name in the BMX MC world. And uh, for the first Catch and Flow, I mean, all the Catch and Flows, Red Bull's there. They're handing out free Red Bulls everywhere. For the pros in the back, there's a huge cooler filled with Red Bulls, but they don't advertise they don't fully sponsor it because it's not extreme enough for them 
So mm -hmm. right, we, we got to step it up, guys. We got to get yeah. more extreme. <laughs> right, exactly. Or like some sort of contest. Like you look at those, they 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 host those uh, Rubik's cube contests, and I'm like, we could do something like they? that with Kendama. Yeah, yeah. They, they host they host paper airplane throwing. That's not ex yeah. like come on. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know they're that. telling me that Kendama is an extreme. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what? But it really isn't for the people who don't know about it. Yeah, if mm -hmm. you look at a Rubik's cube and you like everybody knows what that is, and they know, right. oh, wow, he did it fast, whatever. Everyone knows paper airplane, sweet, it flies really far. I can enjoy this. But yeah. seeing people do taps, juggles, you're just like, they don't know okay. what they're looking at. I think either too, right? You know, right. so it's hard to gauge it's it an from an audience taste. perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we've had, um, you know, Red Bull teams come out and pass out stuff at our events, but like when it came to us, like talking to corporate about it, they were just like, "Yeah, it's 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 not extreme enough for us," which is crazy. So yeah, somewhere along the line, that has to be broken and understood. Um, I really liked what um uh the simple session Kendama event. Do you remember that that um. That BMX yes, and skating yes. event in like uh, yeah. Romania or somewhere. I think it was Romania. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the Kendama stage they had and like the audience they and everything. I was like, this is what it would look like if it was on ESPN, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it I was, was a little I was, tiny, but yeah, it was, there's been a few yeah. in, J in Japan as well. And again, that's that's due to Nobu knowing and you know having those connections. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. You know, who knows? Maybe yeah. Rockstar would be a better bet. <laughs> Whatever. <Yeah. laughs> Somebody got involved with NAKO. So, I mean, that was a pretty big one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And it might look like that. Maybe we have to work with, you know, the small. We got to work our way up to Red Bull. You know, we got yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Bang Energy, Monster. Right. right, right. <laughs> right. Work through all the different energy drinks. And right. Like, we'll right. we'll right. make it yeah. there one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or okay. even like this, or sorry, but to sponsor like podcasts, like imagine if Sony sponsored your podcast and you're using their headphones. So it's mm -hmm. not like Kendama sponsor primarily, but yeah. maybe a bigger electronic item company, you know? Connected to, yeah. Well, I think honestly, like Sweets is doing it really well for the Kendama community and bridging us into some other communities, specifically through their Sweets mob. They've obviously done totally. some really big work there in helping bring Kendama into more of a cultural norm, like yeah. the EDM community. It's like, you could go to an EDM festival and see a Kanama and it's like, that's not weird anymore. That's just kind of a part of that culture because of Boogie T, Subtronics, you name it. Right. Uh, same thing with like BMX and downhill mountain biking. They've worked really hard to make it a popular tool or a popular game in those worlds through their sponsored athletes that they have. And that's helping bridge the gap into yeah. some of those spaces, in my, yeah. in my opinion. But. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, even like, uh, I think in the, the early days, skiing was a big, uh, influence on Kendama and so yeah, like a lot of people came skiing. from the, the yes. skiing community yeah, and uh, inline skating and so uh, yeah I mean it's uh, it's gonna take a while but I think yeah. it'll eventually blow up yeah so l let's bring it back a bit uh, here here's the big question I want to ask why is third-party non-brand affiliated media important for Kendama and its future in your opinions why why are you doing what you're doing because we talked about it we've cut around it a bunch it's not profitable for us yet and maybe in the future but why is it important that we're doing what we're doing in each of your opinions? And why non-brand affiliated? There's two sides of that coin. One is personal, the passion, and one is to provide something, some sort of value to others. Uh, it starts off with passion, I think, for all of us. Uh, anybody doing any kind of craft that they continue to do, that they can become a professional in, and for me, that's what it is. Definitely. I'm sure for you guys too. And anyone who just plays Kendama, it's just a passion for this wooden toy. Um, as well as the, the friends, the community that comes with it, it, be it worldwide or local. And for me, like that's, that's like got a family, getting older. You see now when people talk about like going after your dream a little more you know and there's some people who do it like right away when they're young and there's a lot of people i think who are late bloomers in figuring out what they want to do they just continue with a normal nine to five and it gets tiring and you look back at your life and you're like uh it's half over dudes and like when when is the turn gonna happen when am i gonna finally wake up and start living happy and doing something that I want to do um, even if it doesn't make a lot of money it makes you money mm. in your heart <laughs> so that, that heart cash <laughs> no yeah yeah non-refundable 
So yeah. that <laughs> is definitely something that, that is going to be strong for anyone who picks up and starts doing this kind of um, third party media for Kendama. Yeah, I really think it comes down to just diversity and voices, you know, like Kendama for so long had this one vibe that I felt, you know, there, mm. I always wanted just a different side of it to be and to expand the culture, you know, like a lot of people like people think Kendama, Kendama can't be extreme or hardcore when that's not true. I mean, Dama to the Death has proven that it can be. And, uh, you know, um, I just think having different voices, different opinions, that's how a culture grows. It has yeah. to, it cannot stay stagnant and be this one thing and owned by a big club of five companies who have essentially control over everything and kind of gatekeep who gets to do what. And so to be independent from that, you know, you have the opportunity to, yeah, you're going to be starting small and you're going to need passion and you're going to have to have some thick skin because you're going up against, you know, a Goliath of already established companies, content makers, players or influencers or whatever, you know. And so that's why whatever you do, if it's going to be independent, it has to be its own thing that they can't get anywhere else. And, um, you know, one thing I'm proud of with Dom to the Death or Bevel's Advocate is that, like, none of the companies are interested in trying to, like, take it over or, or you know, they, they keep their distance and mm -hmm. allow me to ha own that corner of Kendama. And, you know, not to say it's all mine, you know, it's definitely grown off into its own thing now, but there's at least there's a, a foundation of that voice that had to happen. And so mm -hmm. I just think having more voices is important. If, if I were to answer the question yeah. for me, one of the pieces that I see valuable in third party media is actually creating a longer lifetime of Kendama players. Uh, you know, if all it is is a product and trick tutorials and games and stuff like that, and we don't give them a deeper place to call home, that is a deeper community, a place where they can meet people, engage, have you know, real conversations, that the lifetime value of a Kendama player is going to be drastically decreased. But by creating a place where history is documented, where conversations are held, where there's actually a genuine place to connect, uh, we actually can prolong the lifetime of a Kendama player by, you know, who knows, a year, two years, three years on average, just by creating these other avenues for them to connect that are more than just playing ball in a cup. So, right. you know, when I created Brewview, like it was obviously by accident, I've said this a, a hundred times over, but now, you know, looking back at what we've been doing here is really creating a place where it isn't about ball and cup. It isn't about playing tricks. I, I try never to do a whirlwind on camera. I, I don't think I've ever done one in the history of Brewview. Uh, and because it's not about that to me, it's not about the ball and cup. It's about the yeah. people behind the can or the stories behind the can is, is what right. I usually will say. And, and I think that's actually prolonging the life of a, of a Kendama player. And that, that to me is what's going to keep growing the community because if it's just about buying Kendamas and learning new tricks, you're going to burn out at some point if you don't have a, a human connection. Right. And yeah. like I said, that's what I was talking about before. Like, uh, you know, prolonging Kendama so people keep playing and they don't think that, oh, the only reason to keep playing is uh, to get sponsored, you know? And if I don't get sponsored, I'm done with this, you know? And mm -hmm. like, I, I think, you know, there's just got to be a variety of, of content, a variety of companies, a variety of people and voices and learning their stories and engaging with them on a different level than just challenging them with Kendama. You know, that's where, that's the best thing about Kendama. I think everybody can agree on is the people you meet, the places you go, not really the tricks or your skill level or anything. You know, it's always about the experience you have with it and how satisfying that is in mm -hmm. itself, but also with what you do with it and who you meet and where you go and things like that. Mm -hmm. what, you do you, what do you wish was different in third party media? What do you think is missing? What, what do you want to see out of third party non-brand affiliated media in the next year or two come out? Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, if you want to kick it off. I mean, you know, uh, like I said, we're, we're still doing Dominant to the Death 4, so that's going to happen again, you know? So, like, keeping that attitude alive, you know? Um, we were supposed to already have it, but, of course, coronavirus. And we got tons and tons of messages about, is it still happening? That's my favorite event. If not, oh, my God, you know? And so, like, there's definitely a demand for that. So I want to keep filling that space a little bit more, you know? But um, I, I just think, you know, 
everyone's doing the best they can, you know, and I'll say that with even like what Sweets does, you know, a lot of people hate on them for how they're trying to popularize Kendama using um, influencers who don't really like play hardcorely like we do, you know, and Yo, people are hating on that. I mean, I've heard a lot of you guys might not get this, but a lot of people think they can just tell me anything. And so I get these random messages all the time of being like, I'm going to share this opinion with you because I know you might understand. And so it's just what I hear, you know? Wow. But, um, uh, but no, I see, that's the thing. I don't hate on it. I just see what they're doing and that's fine. But like, um, you know, I, I think Kendama culture as a whole, you know, but you got to pay attention to the players and where that's going. It's not what the companies put out and follow. It's not a brand following. It's listening to people listening to people in the community, that's been a big thing that's neglected that we're now starting to see some change in of truly listening to a community because this community together, when it's united, can make a difference. And just like any other community in the world. And so I think paying a little bit more attention to the actual players themselves and not just what they're buying, not what they're doing or their trick levels or whatever, but who these people actually are and how Kendama can be more inclusive to them and diverse throughout. And, and content will go in those directions of how to serve uh, those interests and in people. Hmm. <laughs> Thoughts, MJ? I, yeah, no, totally. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes oh, sense. That's good. Totally. Um, yeah. Man, I don't know. I think more of just on like uh, my viewpoint of it is I believe drastically different from you guys because I'm in the country where it was born. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a definitely different vibe. Even when I go online and I see everyone who is, you know, playing Kendama, the community and everything, there's so much of it, just like now, like when I asked you, Ryan, I'm like, people are hating on that stuff. There's so much that I really don't understand. Mm -hmm. I can read it and be like, okay, but still, like, why? Like, what? Because I look over on, on my side of the world where you go to an event and yeah, they're kids at the event, but guess what? Like, those kids are usually with their parents, and the parents are slaying Dama along with their kids. That's then, so cool. And then when we all go drinking, there's, like, kids are allowed into these... They're not actually bars, but they're restaurants that are izakayas, which are focused on, like, drinking and eating. So it's like, kids can go there. So there's plenty of kids, like, late night, who are hanging out, playing Ken Dama in the corner while all the parents are, like, getting drunk and stuff. So it's totally a different vibe. So like for me with this whole thing, I just think like what other kind of a, a how this media can serve the community a little mm -hmm. better. And I feel it's just the connection is a big thing. Um, personally, I know there's a lot of teens. I'm not, not sure about in the States, but there's a lot of like small teams like within Japan. I know within Hong Kong is huge. Taiwan as well. And to just, like, open up and, and learn about each other's ways of, of getting together, maybe small events or something. Um, but I feel like that's something I, I kind of want to, like, highlight and, and touch upon with some uh, content or maybe having them create some content that is good for other people from other countries to, to view and mm -hmm. to get into and become, you know, connected with. Yeah, totally. I, I've seen, you know, if, if we look back at history specifically, you know, I don't know the Japanese context as much as I kind of have seen the American. Um, but in America, there used to be so many of these like small little branded teams all across the country that have now kind of yeah. dissolved. And, you know, a lot of those players are now professional players for brands. I think of uh, COTK, I'm thinking yeah. of uh, Sandpoint Kanama, and, you know, there was the uh, Kanama OC, and some of them still exist Wenatchee. in some form today. Yeah, yeah Wenatchee. And, and all of these little small brands that weren't company affiliated, they were just groups of people trying to create content and make a name for themselves, were mm -hmm. really, you know, first drivers of the Kanama movement. They were the mm -hmm. ones that were really pushing content forward. It wasn't the same type of content that we're doing today, but it was a content that elevated players into a space where they could be seen. And right. there isn't as much as that anymore. Yeah, people yeah. really took Kendama into their own hands if it wasn't in their community. Like, uh, like if there wasn't an event nearby, but you had, you know, five friends who played Kendama, you can host a jam in the park for free on Sunday at two, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's what so many people did. And I did that too. And I met so many people from that. And I didn't think that existed, you know? And then um, I think, you know, that's when I realized, I'll say like, 
man, you can kind of just, you can touch this. That's the thing about Kendama too. It's still like anybody can touch it. And uh, where it's not like super exclusive, like something like uh, motocross or skateboarding or mm -hmm. something like that, you know? There isn't a big price barrier to get in. Right, right, right. And so that's no, why you saw- injury involved either. And that too, <laughs> yeah. And that's why you saw so many companies rise and fall and come and go and, you know, so yeah, many other groups yeah. come and go or whatever come and go. Back in the day, Hone got called a fad company. I remember by a few people being like, yeah, they won't be around in six months. And that like would always piss me off and fuel me to keep going, you know? Yeah. And uh, because I knew what they meant because I saw that too happening all around me. And so I didn't want to be a part of that. Again, going back to what I was saying, I was like, if I just keep going, it'll, something will happen, you know? And so I think that's a big part of it. Even with those groups or companies or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you can take it down into your own hands and make something great and inspire other people to engage with it more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a hustle that's needed to make something happen in Kendama because they're like, like we've talked about, there's, there's a few titans that have been around for a while as big brands. But if you want to make it in this space, you got to grind, you got to really yeah. hustle because we are still in such an infancy space. We're maybe breaking into an early majority here soon, but we're mm -hmm. in that chasm between whether or not we grow and hit a really broad market soon, or we stay a very small niche space. And who knows mm -hmm. till we get that next opportunity, but we're on the cusp of that, in my opinion, where we have the opportunity before us, especially because of the work of some of these big brands to really hit a new wave and to really start bringing in new people. And we're seeing the opportunity come through with guys like Jacob Acrobat picking it up, having mm -hmm. influence over 400,000 people on his Instagram with reels yeah. that are popping off. And it's like, all of a sudden now, Kendama's hitting this new market. And who mm -hmm, knows yeah. what's going to happen, but mm -hmm. I want to be there and ready to ride <laughs> I know what's going to happen. They're yeah. going to be like, oh, what is he playing? This is at Chrome Kendama? Okay, yeah. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you think he do you think he gets paid for those posts? I don't know. No, no, I don't think so. I think they just give him a nice hefty box. Just, yeah, <laughs> here's some swag. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it's, that's the move. But it's yeah. great marketing for for Chrome, and I think Sweets had sent them uh, sent them some kendamas as well. So, I mean, right. it's like four hundred thousand people are now seeing it and those brands, and it's great PR for Sweets and Chrome. They're killing yeah, it. Right. Kendama kind of popped off on TikTok for a minute too. Yeah, there was there was well, some was, that had like millions of views. Was Brian Skagline like putting the toast on the water in the faucet? Yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That had like what, like two million views or something? <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Um, yeah. I haven't ridden the TikTok wave yet. I'm not. I'm yeah, not on yeah. it either. I, I I have the app and I look at it and I just get lost. I'm like, I yeah. also think it's like where I'm located because I just see everything from Japan. So I'm like, yeah, uh, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask this question. You know, what does it take for you to be fully funded and independent as a, and, and where do you see that coming along the lines? Like, do you see Kanama for you, either of you guys, I asked this earlier, being a full-time income for you and being sustainable? Uh, because that's kind of the question I wanted to get to is like, what's the sustainability for third party media in Kanama? Because, you know, it, it's a grind right now, I think for all yeah. of us. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say, you know, kind of like what you guys do i mean just build a loyal following and ho have a way to so they can support you i mean i've tried to, like we have a um a collab with uh uh dama on they're making a bevel's advocate dama still and so uh i don't know how that deal is going to work but even just like uh transforming it into different things like i love that bevel's advocate can be put into a kendama form people like the logo and requested shirts before I mean, I don't see that being a full-time income. I, like I said, going back to the way that, you know, mm -hmm. we're a marketing company now, I think that's really what it's going to, that's what's going to feed us for a while, you know. But, um, uh, you know, the show is still important to me because it's, again, that different voice. I have a ton of fun with it. And, um, you know, it's something that I feel kind of explains myself better and um it's rewarding in that way kind of like the uh, heart money you're talking about it's uh I, I definitely still i never wanted to give up my voice in kendama you know despite everything in the in the past or whatever and I, again i never want to quit and it, it's such a kendama player thing to, to say like never give up and all that and i think that's one thing that kendama players share is that these are a ton of people this is an entire community of people who've never given up Mm -hmm. And because they can, they can do these tricks and they can, yeah. you know, they know it's hard. They know it's challenging. 
especially when you're a beginner, but you didn't let that intimidate you and you kept going mm. and you kept playing. And there's tricks I do today, even just the border balance, where if you showed me when I first started, I'd be like, that's impossible. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. And then, you know, here I do them, no problem. And, you know, that's just, I've always applied that to everything. You know, Kendama's mm -hmm. gotten me jobs in the past where I'll bring one with me and be like, look, you, you want to see, oh, they, they say, um, how do I know you're going to be a hard worker? I go, watch this. <laughs> and no I come, way. <laughs> I come out and I do like a juggle spike. And they go, oh, my God. And I was like, I've been playing this thing for like five years and I've never stopped. And if I can do this, I can work hard enough for you as well. And they go, you're hired. You know, and so it, it, you it, heard it here, folks, guys, well, <laughs> take a to your job interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's a community that likes to persevere and overcome challenges. And so um, going back to how it makes money, like I said, the whole marketing thing we're doing. But um, uh, yeah, that, what, that's how and hopefully collaboration the in the future. Do you have a timeline to where you think that you could be? you know, mon monetarily supported enough by Kendama. Do you see that yeah. as a one, two, three year journey for you where that yeah. could be a reality? Yeah, I think what we're doing with Soul Kendamas is really cool. They, you know, they signed us on for like a couple of years. So like we get, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we get monthly billings from them now for like the blog writing we're doing. We just started with that. And now, um, you know, we had a meeting with them earlier this week about, you know, uh, some other things that they were interested in doing. And then they even proposed a plan for even further down the line of like, hey, this is how we could really bring you guys in as our agency. And, um, you know, we can really because, you know, they're growing a lot and they can't do everything. You know, you know mm -hmm. how small soul is. And, uh, you know, they just need help with that kind of stuff. And we're here to do it. And, you know, by honing in, if you will. Uh, cool. to, to just uh, soul kendamas, um, you know, we're able to kind of direct our line of sight a little bit too about just focusing on one brand instead of the culture in general. That's kind of like what Domino the Death or Bevel's Advocate, mm -hmm. that's where home media fits into culture, I think, uh, where it's valuable because it's unique and different. Whereas we also have uh, one thing that kendama companies struggled with with hiring marketing agencies in the past is none of the agencies would do research on kendama or they don't understand culture. kendama at all yeah they don't understand it and mm. i'm sure you under i'm sure you you know all about that too and so uh that's one thing you know chad and shelton said to me was just like yeah you guys know this stuff inside and out and you know the technical aspects of digital marketing to where like we really need that and you know um We've, we've always, you know, appreciated what you guys have done in the past for us and blah, 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 and vice versa. You know, the, Chad and Sheldon have just been great to us uh, since the beginning. And so um, we, working that deal out with them to where it's rewarding for them, it's rewarding for us. That's one thing we've lacked for so long, you know, honed running on fumes of just trying to do advertising. We didn't really have support from another company, mm -hmm. but um, now ad that Advertising's do, tough. Right. Yeah, because if you want yeah. to get advertising from broader companies, like in my full time work, I do podcast advertising. I pay for podcast advertising on shows. It's like we don't really look at shows that have less than 10,000 weekly listeners on their episodes. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're only getting paid on a CPM basis of maybe twenty dollars to twenty five dollars per thousand listeners. So you're maybe getting paid on a weekly basis, like two hundred to two hundred and fifty bucks, maybe. And you have to grind and that's what a thousand dollars a month. And I don't think any of us are doing 10,000 weekly listeners at all or anywhere. It's not even close. Yeah. It's like we, yeah. you know, like I've thought about it over and over of whether or not, you know, oh, would I take podcast sponsorships or advertising for the show? And I'm like, it wouldn't be worth it yet for me. It's like, I don't want to sell out my following or sell out what I'm doing to an mm. advertiser because it wouldn't be like I, twenty dollars isn't going to make a difference in my monthly right. paycheck, right? Right. It's like yeah. okay, I can buy another bag of coffee. Right. <laughs> but, right. Right. But you know what I mean? It's like I I think that that's an opportunity coming, but it's not the best opportunity. I think there's other ways that I've considered either either okay. Th these are my two options that I'm considering. It's like I either have to hit a broader market and start servicing a wider space so that I can increase the following of this and draw more people in, and then maybe at a later date monetize the podcast. Now, also a little secret, if you guys don't know this, because I'm in podcast advertising, Spotify recently bought out Anchor and a couple other uh, podcast studios, and they've just opened oh, wow. a beta for companies to start advertising on podcasts uh, like they do on Spotify non-premium for people who right. don't pay. Okay, okay, so you right. can do ad insertions in your podcast by adding pins in your episode of where you want an ad to play. And you get paid, I think it's like, 
it depends on the buy the the ad buy of the company but you could be getting paid say like 10 to 25 dollars per thousand listens of that right. ad spot and right. that's a possibility in the future for some organic monetization of your shows or my show. Mm -hmm. But even then, right. again, like, I don't know how worth it it is until we hit a broader audience. So hey, I'm like, okay, I could try and serve as a broader market and hit the hobbies market in general and not just mm -hmm. Kanama by adding one episode a month with someone in a different niche that right. might be connected or similar that could share some interest, like Yo-Yo or right. something like that. Right. Bring right. on Gentry yeah. Stein and try right. and collect some Yo-Yo listeners. Yeah, back in the day, that's, what, that's why we were called Skilderness and not Kendaminess. You know, oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was originally fingerboarding Yo-Yo and Kendama. Yeah. And I tried, because right before that, I made a fingerboarding documentary that blew up on YouTube. And so, um, like, that thing shot past 100,000 views in, like, six months. And I couldn't believe it. I expected, like, 4,000 views. <laughs> and um, so that's where I kind of got the idea of, like, man, I already do this Kendama thing. I just made this fingerboarding film. And I know all these people in that community. Like, and I know some people in the yo-yo community here in Orlando. Like, how do I tie this all together into something yeah. that all three of those markets are being served. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're, 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 we're thinking a lot alike there because it is, you gotta find different markets to kind of support it. Yeah, but, but it's hard at the same time because the moment that you start branching out, like I, I talk to my patrons and I talk to some of my followers and I'm like, okay, that episode that I did a few months back with Alex from Oddball Sports, it's like, they were like, yeah, it was kind of cool, but it was kind of weird. It wasn't like my favorite episode because it wasn't Kendama. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so if I start branching out into these other spaces, it it sort of devalues my content for the community I really care about and really serve exactly. the community I'm super invested in. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I would way rather have 10,000 dedicated Kendama listeners than 10,000 dedicated hobby listeners that right. are all kind of like somewhat engaged. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's a big fear for us right now since we just transitioned to this agency too. It's like, our, like you can go through our Instagram, the content's already changing and kind of being more main streamlined. And uh, yeah, yeah, I saw some that, like cows on there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so yeah, yeah, that that and that's us working. You know, we're working with the city of Orlando on yeah, stuff now awesome. too. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like we're in that space a lot more locally, where there's like a ton of engagement in person every day now. Where you know we're going to these meetings and all this, but um, I feel the same way. But that's why we have the, like the Bevel's Advocate account, where like we're trying to bring our Kendama people there and. Mm -hmm. uh, like we still, like I don't want to abandon them. I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, betray them because, you know, their support has what kept this all going for so long that I still want to respect it as best as I can. And so, yeah. you know, I kind of put it in back in Bevel's Advocate. We're still doing Kendama events and things like that. And so we're just trying to hone in on the best things that we can do for the community instead of just throwing so much at the wall and seeing mm -hmm. what sticks, you know, right. because I, I've literally tried every kind of Kendama content from print, podcasts, videos, events, social media. I've tried it all. And, you know, I've still struggled with finding the right thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think we got it now with what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, what about you, MJ? Because I know you, you were talking about it. Like, you're, you're doing the, the, the honoring work of documenting the journey and the history of Kendama, which I think is critical and is so crucial. And when I go back and listen to those episodes, I feel so much more deeply connected to the Kanama community and it's harder for me to step away from it because I now know the stories and you're doing that work. And I don't think, for my opinion, it wouldn't make sense for you to branch out of doing that work into a, a broader space like what we're kind of talking about. It's like, but at the same time, like Kanama is not big enough yet where there's enough people that are trickling down into that funnel of listening to our podcast from the Kanama space that it's monetarily feasible at this moment. Right. But maybe you have a different story. I'm, I'm curious for your perspective on on how you think it could be possible. I'm, I'm definitely for the, the hardcore fan, for the, for the supporters. Uh, I really believe maybe it's like old school, but uh, like most of the podcasts that I listen to and, um, and support, they are fully listener supported and mm -hmm. they do not do any advertisements at mm -hmm. all. And that is something that I really appreciate respect and that is something that i will definitely continue with um i'll give a place for people to to support in different ways uh, mm -hmm. i have a background of graphic design and illustration wanting to go down more that path as well and it's like th for the people who appreciate the art there there's plenty of people that are out there and they will support you if you give them a place to so that's that's where i'm sticking with with the community mm -hmm. um not trying to sell anything myself anyone out but but 
to to just be there. Yeah, to totally like loyal and provide stuff that I because like I look at it as like if I'm in their shoes, I, you know, right? When you're marketing, you think about what does the customer want, and I don't want any advertisements. I don't want any bullshit anywhere. So that's what I'm going to stick with. Sticking to my story, you know. <laughs> I love that, respect that, and and that's I think what we all would want, uh, where yeah, we can yeah, yeah. we can live that out. And yeah. and you know, like my question is like, okay, so okay. you you have you have a hundred and some patrons now, right? It's like. Yes which is freaking incredible. Like that's amazing awesome. for our niche yeah. industry to oh, have a yeah. hundred people dedicating some of their monthly income towards supporting a third party media agency in a game they love and that they're already yeah. spending a thousand dollars a month on Kandamas on, you Best know? People's. Yeah. 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 It, it's totally. like that. That's incredible. And you know, I look at some podcasts. I, cause like I said, I, I work with podcasts all over the space and I see some of them and they're very just listener supported. They, you know, they run ads cause I buy them from them, but they also have these dedicated, <laughs> uh, Patreon support groups that mm. are in the thousands and they're maybe niche industries that they're advertising yeah. in, and they have a thousand people supporting. And all of a sudden you look at that number and you're like, wait, they're doing this full time. They can afford to do this full time. And it's beautiful yeah. based on listener support. And it's like, okay, I want to create a space where that's the narrative for Brewview, uh, where I'm creating enough valuable content where people want to support it and be fully supporter funded or fully listener supported. That would be beautiful for me. I would right, love that. Right. Uh, yeah. But we, we need to grow Kendama, in my opinion, yeah. to a larger sphere so that we can get more trickle down listeners because I, like, we don't need to talk numbers or anything, but like, yeah, there's only so many li people listening to podcasts in the Kendama community at a time. Yeah. I think the, the biggest thing is like, we, we almost have to leave that up for the big brands to do that, which I'm um, so I'm happy sweets is doing a awesome job getting into different types of markets and stuff that are of, of like-minded people because we're at least for, for Ken entertainment, I'm just like the extra kind of like what you were talking, uh, touching upon Adam, where you're, we're elongating the lifespan of a Kendama player by connecting to a community and making the bonds stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely where I find myself and that's where I enjoy it because when I was 2013 hanging out at Sioux lab, when there's only like seven people and we're all like, drinking beers and like just playing games you can like that's that's it that's that's what it's all about mm. so that's what i definitely want to just continue with so we leave it up to the big brands i feel to to make the audience bigger to put kendamas in other people's hands and then we're there to just facilitate the extra oomph and love that can get you know the cherry on top for the yeah. whole community stuff about it do you think that there's a way that we could change that narrative a little bit from our positions in being third-party media by creating a space for people to come into by actually helping the brands by doing their work as well by being some of the front runners of bringing people in and what does that look like i mean ryan you were talking about Ooh. that by having a heavy metal band at your, at yeah, your yeah, band yeah. to help bring mm -hmm. in a different audience and yeah, you know, I, yeah i try to hit on the coffee market a little bit or you mm. know by doing an episode mm -hmm. a month where i bring in other people do you see a place for that in your world as well mj i know that you're very much for the hardcore fans but mm. i also see your youtube videos and they do reach probably a bit of a broader audience uh probably but they probably just like dip off like after the first minute i'm guessing okay it's like uh, because again, it's like a kendama. If you don't know what it is, you don't know like the fun of it. Like when we was like, playing with a kendama, and instead of a tama, it's a, it's a it's a cube. Mm -hmm. Only you, people who play kendama will understand actually how difficult that is. Because if you don't, it, okay, skip next video or whatever. Um, but man, like I see it as at least personally, to continue, I'm definitely going to continue, and I almost like look at it as like a freelance thing where. I'm going to have this, but I'm going to also be doing other things. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my art and graphic design stuff as well. I'm going to have like a few different funnels pretty much of yeah. income to provide for me so I can continue to do all this stuff again that I love because cause I, I, I don't want to be sitting in my deathbed looking back at the shitty job that I have that got, gave me money but at the opportunities that I kind of passed up mm -hmm. of something that I really loved to do. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. I, I, I see what you mean. Like, I think it's everybody's responsibility. You know, if you're going to do something in Kendama, like put a brand to it, you know, at least it's everybody's responsibility at that point to, uh, 
bring in other people or outside people into mm -hmm. it. You know, like here in Orlando, we've tried doing events at places where people will walk by and discover mm -hmm. it that way. And so, um, you know, I've always tried putting it in or going out and playing at certain events and have people come up to me and ask me what it is, you know, or because I don't expect the content to reach totally new audiences. Mm -hmm. However, though, I'm no matter what I do or where I go, like even a job interview, like I said, you know, I try to show it to as many people as I possibly can in any way possible. Like mm -hmm. when um, lockdown mm -hmm. first happened with COVID, yeah. um, we went and did, we sent, I took, I had a bunch of Damas lying around. And so I figured, you know, there's still a way that we <laughs> can uh, get this out to people. And so I san sanitized them all, put rubber gloves on, and put attached a note to all these kendamas and just put them around town saying, pick this up, this is a kendama, here's what it is. And then included a link on it to um, uh, a home media article for our beginner's guide. Mm. And so, you know, that was still a way to share a kendama. And it's funny, I, I went that route the next day and all of them were gone. And so oh, wow. somebody picked them up. It was just one or, guy following you picking them all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But, you know, that was just something cool. I thought, like, I had those damas laying around. I wasn't going to events, you know, or anything like that. You know, I was kind of saving them to burn a dama to the death. And so I just figured uh, we got to, you know, here's, here's another way to keep spreading it. And so mm -hmm. I, I think everybody should be spreading kendama all the time in any way they can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, hey, let me say, like, hosting an event as a third party or, a, you know, a non, non-branded mm -hmm. company yeah, is yeah. actually such a cool opportunity. Like, I hosted mm -hmm. Brew Battle this past year. And it was such a beautiful place to connect and not be right. so branded focused and it's like this is one brand that is running mm -hmm. this and it's all about that i created a i got to create a space where you know multiple brands could show up and be loved and it was really just about the players not about building a brand equity by any means it was mm -hmm. really just about creating a space and i think that's great about dama to the death and i love that about a lot of these non-brand affiliated events it's like mm -hmm. these are just guys hustling out here doing it mm -hmm. it's not generating the more sales for their product or anything like right. that sure, they might make an income off the event. And that's totally like, do that, right? You're putting in the time, money, energy, and effort. You, there should be some reward for you at the end of Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I, I have no problem with that. And yeah. I think it's great. And I wanna see more of that from other people that are willing to step up and do that. But mm -hmm. I think one of the things, and maybe you can touch on this a little bit, is that I think a lot of players have a paralysis because of social media to actually go and do something. Now, you know, back mm. in the day, like we were talking, there was COTK, there were all these other small groups of people that were just doing stuff, hosting mm -hmm. events, Tacoma Takeover, you name it, whatever it was. And today it's like, oh, let's just wait for the big brand to do it for us. Let's just right. wait because they can do it better than me. So let's mm -hmm. let them do it instead of going, how can I make something? Right, right. And I think, you know, a big part of that is, you know, they feel like somebody's already doing it bigger and better, you know, and again, and I, I hate to keep plugging down with the death but it, it's just it's a different natured event and so that's why it works but also one thing that we've struggled with in the past before is like you know we wanted to keep doing it but like you got to think of the other big events that people are probably going to attend before yours right mm -hmm. so um we had to look at the entire year as best as we could and figure out when those events will be and find a window to where not everybody's at nako the next month because we're all saving up to go to that Oh, wait, yeah. but it's a month before KWC over here. So it's like, man, these people are going to be broke when they get back and they're not going to come <laughs> to our event, you know, and they're probably saving up for NAKO. Yeah. So maybe we shouldn't do it in between those events. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we went to another part of the calendar and was like, okay, or we do that every year now to try to figure out what is the best window. Because, like, that, that's been something, like, we didn't think about in the, in the past to where now it's like we always think about, like, what is the best window because we can't really compete yet with these other larger events. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... It is challenging, but, you know, you do, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you, both of you know, like, when you do create your own space or your own event, it's a really, like, prideful thing to know that you're able to congregate. I've never done events or anything like that, like, before any of this, mm -hmm. or I never wanted to, but I wanted to play and meet with other people. And I, I knew the only way that I was going to do that is if you put yourself out there, or put myself out there and, you know, not just wait, you know, and that's what a mm -hmm. lot of people do. They just wait or let other people do it for them. And that's OK to some extent. You know, we need people to come to these, our events. Right. But Dude, uh... <laughs> hosting hosting brew battle is one of the scariest things I did this past year. A, because we did it in a weird gap space of COVID where we were allowed to do indoor yeah, events yeah. for like up to 50 people. So I was so afraid. I was like, if we get COVID here, this is going to be oh terrible. God. Yeah. And it was yeah. totally legal. We kept it all safe. It was good. Yeah. And we were fine. Um, yeah. But but that was scary. But more than that, it's like I put in probably, you know, 
a thousand dollars into running that event and i'm like okay i hope that people want to come to this and right like, right yeah, what if that doesn't pan out what if that doesn't work and yeah, people yeah. don't come and yeah. you have just like shafted your brand you've felt let down you didn't make a return and you just dumped a bunch of money into something and it's scary but when you're a bigger brand it's like okay you're generating an income off of these other things and this is another piece to add into the pie but right. if you're if you're an independent like you or me or mj it's like that's scary stuff. It's money. Yeah. It is a risk yeah. that we are taking. It's higher risk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not, a lot of people are afraid of the risk. And, you know, that's a big thing, you know, that is always, that's what makes it so challenging is you got to determine this is the risk and whether it's worth it or not. Or, you know, you can't be afraid to fail. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, um, that, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. Dude, absolutely. Okay, uh, as we wrap up, because uh, we'll, we'll try and put a bow on this here soon. Um, I'm loving this. This is so fun. It's allowed me yeah. a space to vent because I feel like that, you know, I chat with brands <laughs> uh, yeah, all the time yeah. and it's like, I don't want to vent about this to a brand right. by any means, but it's like a great space for us to come together and say, hey, you know, there are some individuals out there that are doing some really great work doing third party media instead of just being branded media by a brand. And I want to say thanks. Thanks for coming on here. Um, but let me let me ask two questions let, that I have. And then if you guys have questions and we'll hit some from the, the chat here as well and we'll kind of wrap up with some Q&A. Nice. Um, one question I want to ask is, what would be another brand that you see out there that is a non-brand affiliated brand doing great third-party media that you would want to shout out? I'll, I, I can start. I'll say I've been a huge, I've been on a huge European kick recently and mm -hmm. I am absolutely in love with everything Kanama France is doing. They're, they're A, a distributor. They're selling... Kanamas for all these different brands out there, but they are creating some of the most aesthetically pleasing content in the space of Kanama, and they're yeah. not a brand themselves. They mm -hmm. or they're not a they're not producing Kanama. Well, they make native Kanama now, but yeah, they're yeah. just producing great content for all of these other brands, and it's getting reshared, and it's just great stuff. Yeah. And I'm so stoked for what they do. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. They're French. <laughs> 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 all they have is aesthetics. But um, yeah, so, uh, that's a good one. I mean, all of Europe too. Kendama London does a great job. Yeah. But I would say, you know, mm. uh, closest to me that I've seen, um, Georgia Kendama players, you know, yes. like they have a podcast, they have a blog, I think. They yeah. do yeah. You know, tons of events, you know. They definitely Dude. are the place in Georgia for all of that. And for the South, like they were the biggest thing above us before Hone Media got, you know, in Central Florida pr pretty big. But uh, definitely everything that they do is yeah. pretty, Shout out pretty Nick great. Drummer. Nick Drummer mm -hmm. kills yeah, it dude. with that. Mm -hmm. It's Nick Drummer, right? That is Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. there's a there's another Nick, Nick Doden or, or there's Doden a couple Hart, there's too many Nicks. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. the yeah. Georgia Nick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Doden Hoff, yeah. But drummer yeah. and IG. Uh what about oh, yeah, they do a good job, yeah. Uh dude, man. I'm not sure. You know what? There is like just just um, stoke that people bring, individuals bring with the, with their content, um, with their personalities. Um, so it's not specifically a team or anything, but it's Romney Stankalicious has always been on one Instagram that I always just smile and I love watching him. One because he's ridiculously good at kendama. And two, well, not and two, there's going to be number three. Two, all the positivity that he brings to everyone who's following him and just everyone around him. And three, I love his laugh, dude. His laugh just makes me laugh. And, like, that's what we all want to do. Dude, and that <laughs> guy is smile. his own brand with that Pikachu yes. hat that he rolls around with. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, he is his own brand. Yes. The so him and, like, other people, like, just, like, um, maybe, I mean, they're connected with, deal with it. But Kendama Fufu, they've been kind of sleeping recently. But when they first came out and were creating these videos, like it was just a beautiful thing to see. This, like, of course they're Japanese, so they know about Kendama, but re-embracing it in this new form that it is, and a couple doing it one, and then mm -hmm. doing it in such like an entertaining way that I think and i believe you know other people felt uh, a joy from watching that stuff so uh, i yeah. feel like yeah people taking it in in, in kendama in a different light or approaching it differently making content a little differently and that's what kind of uh makes it stand out for me and be like yeah i like that kind of stuff their christmas series was dope uh 
the the other question I wanted to ask. So, okay, so those are a couple of brands that you guys see are doing well. You know, Roni, Kanoma Fufu, Kanoma Georgia, or Georgia Kanoma, yeah. I think is Georgia Kanoma. Georgia Kanoma. Yeah. Um, I su I support the e girls too. The e girls. <laughs> who, are, who are the e girls? <laughs> uh, the the Kanoma e girls. That's um uh that Rocket Baby chick and uh all, that whole side of Kanoma too. So okay. Oh, yeah, I'm we don't have to familiar. touch on that for too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, okay. I might be a little too familiar. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll skirt past that one real quick <laughs> and ask the next question. Uh, I want to know, uh, what do you see is missing in third-party Kanama media as a gap that can be filled? Because all of us have so much on our plate already. We're already doing a lot each individually, you know, w with everything we're doing. But what is the hole that you see that could be filled by some young rising star that wants to make a name for themselves in third party media? Hmm. That's a good question. I think art's a big one. Like, um, hmm. you know, like uh, there's so many graphic designers who like uh, that, that, that apply stuff to stickers or t-shirts or stuff like that or design logos for companies or like the Domino the Death logo and the Bevel's Advocate logo were both designed by a guy named Tim Stickrod. And he's a great Kendama player and he's just so talented. I, I would lay out to him like, okay, I want something like a skeleton or like a Grim Reaper or something, maybe like doing an earth turn or something like that. That's, that's basically what I gave him. And in two days he had the exact, it was first try, nailed it. And it was exactly what I wanted. And same thing with Bevel's Advocate. I was like, yeah, something like a devil that's also a Kendama with headphones maybe. I don't know, you just play with it. I literally just said that. First try, perfect, nailed it. And he's a part of like a printing company or um, some sort of design company or whatever, but he applies like all the stuff he does with that company to Kendama. And, you know, um, I just think, you know, artists in general, there's so many like uh, Masako too, um, and so many other great people who are so talented and just creating art. I mean, MJ, you too, man. I mean, I, you make great Kendama art as well. We used it for the Thank zine you. and, um, you know, when I was making that zine, we scoured the community for the best art we could find. And mm. it was hard to choose from. There was so much great stuff that I felt bad cutting some stuff out because they just do so much great work. And it's hard to keep coming up with original designs for Kendama. Like, I can understand how apparel companies, you know, struggle with how do we keep a Kendama relevant in a design? <laughs> how many yeah, different yeah. colorways can we put on this thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Or how, how many different variations of a Kendama and, or, right, and right. attaching it to something else? You know, it's always been yeah. super hard. And we've struggled with that, too, at home, you know, trying to make shirts in the past, too. But um, I, I think, you know, it... Apparel still, I think, needs a lot of work, but uh, there's so many great designers out there. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, that's made such a, since I wrote that first article about hating on it today, I would totally take it back. It, you, it's yeah, it's yeah, changed so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan's going to write a new article for yeah. just, <laughs> just to redact his old yeah. one. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, I think there's so much great work being done by individuals, even down in the chat, spiffy.toys. Uh, mm -hmm. Selvia out in Toronto, she burns custom kanamas for people. And yeah. she does distribution in Canada. She, you know, hand burns art onto Ken. She did one for, for me a little bit ago. I have it up on my shelf. I mean, yeah. it never gets seen on review because it's, you know, this frame, <laughs> but uh, she does great work. I love the different clothing apparel companies out there. I've seen a resurgence of YouTubers doing, you know, tutorials on Kendama and stuff like yeah, that. And yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a space that can be taken over again is yeah. YouTube. I haven't seen a ton of content. So I, I've been like, yeah. okay, I, I haven't oh, seen it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. start yeah. doing it. You know, yeah, dude, yeah. TJ with Ken Cole was yes! killing it. He was yes. killing it. You yeah. know, and I, I know he's sleeping a little bit too, but he still <laughs> plays and I know all that. But oh my God, he made such great review videos and unboxings. Those were, yes. those it, were just right. The production perfect. quality was insane. Perfect. He did yeah. so yeah. great. Dude, I, I told him I wanted to get him, on, like I, I'll eventually hopefully get him on the podcast, but I want should, him yeah. to do podcast content or something else. A, he's got an incredible voice for it. Uh, mm. B, I think he's very poised. And C, I think he just has a great perspective on the game from a bit of an outside perspective, looking in and mm. not being brand affiliated. Like he's a guy that right. I think could really do some cool work in the space that already has a bit of a platform on YouTube and just do cool stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a guy that I'd root for, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It definitely would be a lot easier than his video stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I super admire him for cranking those out like he did. Yeah. And, you know, because you can see the production value and quality and all that. Yeah. And 
you know, him also being a good player and a great guy. I, he and I had had many conversations because I appreciated what he did so much. Like, yeah. dude, it's, it's great content. And again, you know, you can kind of see him slowing down a little bit because it is really not it's that taxing. boring. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. He had a couple of videos go big, but even then it's like the ad revenue is not going to pay for you no, to be able to keep creating no. videos of that quality. Like, yeah, you just, you, yeah. Yeah. You just made tough. a great unboxing video. Yeah. yeah. That I, a lot of people watched. Yeah. I, right now I do this such like impromptu. I don't pay for like editing software or anything. I keep it very low cost because my inputs of revenue to, to support this isn't high enough to afford me to be able to do, you know, high quality microphones and everything. It was like, Let's just keep this simple and keep it going right. until we can afford to upgrade quality on things. It's like right. bootstrap it. Have some fun with right. this. Right, right, exactly. Okay, guys, let's hit some questions uh, from uh, some of the people that posted on the comments of the post. And we have some questions in the chat as well here. And then we're going to yep. close off with a final question of who would win in an unrestricted cage match between all three podcast hosts? So oh, if, that's if you good. and Ryan and myself were to get together in a cage no rules, no, and we each get to bring one kendama in. Who's coming oh, out victorious? One kendama. <laughs> one kendama, and what kendama would you be bringing in? But before we get to that question, <laughs> let me hit a couple of these. Julian AD yep. underscore says, he wants to know, dream person each of you guys would love to have on your podcast. Who's your ideal mm. guest? I already know MJ's uh, answer. I, I have a, like two or three. Um, that's a great question. Uh, you you go first. Well, I, go yeah, I, yeah, never, yeah, yeah. I really never thought of it. Uh, well, of course, Colin Sander, Godfather of American Kendama, has been on our list. We've been contacting him for such a long time; it just hasn't <laughs> happened yet. hasn't He hasn't manifested himself for us. That's one that should happen that hasn't happened. Uh, talking with Tamotsu Kubota San oh. of Gloken is definitely a big one. I need to get him into you know get a few beers in him i think to so he could go full english with us um but those those are the two big ones definitely but uh from from the past like of course um the, the legend the, there's two legends there's jeffrey van Rees, and then there's the super nog alex mm. Roy. Those dudes, if you all heard from the past, like Sweets Unboxing and stuff, he talks about how when we first started Ken Dominic in like 2018, they were already on like edit 13 or something on YouTube. And they were doing ridiculous tricks with mm -hmm. the Ken Damas back in the day. And if you've never played a Ken Dama back like a 2013 Dama, like you watch the video, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Like that's lame stuff. That's what I was doing like by the end of my second month of Ken Dama now. Right. Yeah, but again, like just respecting the roots. So definitely talking back to those dudes and and opening up their history books. Yeah, oh, I think I would try to get a uh, a good round table of like Jake Weens, Matt Sweets, Torkill, and maybe like Jero from Kendama USA. Just get all of them in one room and let them duke it out. You know, and like <laughs> have them argue who created what first and uh, who's the biggest <laughs> company and whatnot. You know. Yeah, you, I've never seen them like all in one room together. So I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, uh, going back to kind of the branch of talking about bridging some of the communities together, I think it would be so fun to get Jacob Acrobat on a podcast episode. Mm. Uh, he's obviously like generating a lot of hype for Konama and giving yeah. all of the Konama players like an idol to look up to for the moment. And I think it'd be really fun to hear from him. And plus, like getting that mustache on cam would be dope. So uh, he'd, he'd be a big one for me that I think would be so fun to have. Yeah, uh, I loved I loved his quote where he's like, I never knew I was playing Kendama all these years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, when he's like, yeah, I've been training for this my whole life without knowing. Yeah, yeah. Which right. is so cool. And he's just like blown it out of the water for, for the community. So I'm stoked. Can't wait to see which company gets them on their team. <laughs> but <Ooh. laughs> that's going to be the big race is to find out which brand he likes. Because if, if he mm. picks a brand and he starts repping one brand, that, that's a huge boost to that brand sales, I think, in my Definitely. opinion. Um, okay, a uh, question here from Dustin underscore A underscore Nut wants to know, is there an interview that means a lot to you or had lasting impact for you? Um, for everyone, if time allows, we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but if you want to just quickly hit that, you know, episode that means a lot to you and I'll answer because I don't think I actually answered this question. Oh, yeah, you didn't. You go first. Okay, I'll go. I'll, I'll go first. I think I think the episode where I realized I was on to something with doing review where 
you know, there was a decent amount of connection and we hit a different kind of note was the Max Norcross episode where we really got into the emotional burden that he had kind of gone through uh, yeah. as being a sponsored player, traveling and trying to keep up the energy level in supporting the game and what kind of a toll that took on him as a personality. And just seeing him talk through that live in what seemed to be some sort of psychotherapy session on, on cam was, <laughs> was honestly like such a cool moment for me because I had really looked up to players like Max when I first started. And then to hear from his side, like how hard some of that journey had been for him was, was really cool. So I think that episode meant a lot to me personally. And yeah. I'll, I'll also say the brew view and review episode where it was just me talking, I had no guests on and I just talked through like what, what had happened in the four or five months leading up to that and the journey of starting review and the journey that I had been on was really humbling for me to see, wow, this picked up a lot of pace really, really quick in a cool way. Right. Mm. Yeah, I would say for me, it was probably the uh, Chad Covington episode that we did because, you know, one, Chad's such a good sport that, you know, we were able to feel comfortable, you know, kind of poking some fun at him and Soul and whatnot. And also, like, he plays along with us. And so uh, he just made it fun and enjoyable. And I thought kind of like set the standard of like, you know, kind of like what we want out of our guests, you know, because we don't just want to bring guests on, you know, and just, you uh, doll them up mm -hmm. and butter them up and all this you know we we want to engage with them and while we have their full attention you know we really do want to like pick them apart or like ask their opinions or conversate with them mm -hmm. but just him talking about like what goes into how they design their kendamas because he was talking about the soul vibes at that time which is like a line of 12 mm -hmm. so it must be difficult it's hard enough designing one kendama i can't imagine doing a series of 12 and so the way he talked about that and you know He's just a super humble and modest guy and yeah. you know uh, uh you know he's so wholesome it's kind of painful and it's uh but that's why i liked him on the show he was a good kind of like uh opposite to have and um and since he was just a good sport about it you know he, he's yeah. just uh, chad's another one he's like the man you know chad chad is the man i think he's yeah. one of the greatest people in the canola community i love him to bits mm -hmm. he's a beauty mj <laughs> Oh, man, dude, they're all like my babies. So each episode, like he's talking with everyone. Like uh, me and me and Rod have a massive list of guests that we want to get through. And it's always going back and forth asking like, dude, so who should we have on next? It's like, oh, I want to hear from them. But it's like, oh, but what about this person? Like it just continues on and on and on. Um, but most, most memorable, uh, Kendama World Cup episode, episode 16 that we did, where we just, after day one of Kendama World Cup in Hiroshima, in the hostel, um, Omotenashi hostel, we were just in a room, in Ra's room, where he bunked with a bunch of other people. We had a round table to set up the mic. Then we had like 20 people. It was kind of a slow paced episode because we were going around. And it was yeah. just off the cuff, but greatest outro ever. And it will forever be. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, Austin Donovan down in the chat says, whichever one of you gets Colin Sander first gets a big fat kiss from me. <laughs> I think I think we, I, I'm not going to ask Colin ever until he's already appeared on Dominard. So I think Dominard has grinded for that episode for too long. Oh, yeah, oh, man. I, I respect it. You know, like, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not even gonna. <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt to put my fingers on that episode. Yeah. I can't speak for Ryan though. He, he likes controversy. Yeah, I was gonna say whoever has his number, let me know. I gotta get him first. I need better ratings. They already have followers and everything. <laughs> Give it to me first. Absolutely. Uh, okay, King Dama thirteen. I talked to this guy a little bit. Um, th this is a guy who has you know stirred up a little bit of of angst towards himself from some people in the Kendama community, and he asked a question that I think maybe uh, each of us could maybe touch on a little bit in our opinion towards it because i think we might be a bit unique he says honest to god question i want answered what's the appropriate way to deliver feedback to companies i feel like whenever i'm critical of kanama companies people assume i'm mad that i'm not sponsored or some shit when in reality i feel like brands can do more and be more uh, he wants to know mm -hmm. how he can deliver feedback to a company now obviously uh, this is social media tone is important and there's a lot of factors that go into this but you know, as non-brand affiliated brands here, how would you deliver feedback to a company in a way that you think they would receive it well? I mean, that's, that's tough because, you know, first of all, it's usually unsolicited. So they, 
probably, you know, if, if you're coming to a company with some feedback about something, you know, uh, it's, it's hard, like, how do you get them to take you seriously about what it is? It also depends on what you're trying to give the feedback about, you know? Um, but I mean, um, there was one time Marley and I went the full measure and we flew to Minneapolis just for a one day meeting with the entire Suites team to talk about uh, our third party content and everything. You know, they wanted to do it over the phone, but I felt like, you know, I didn't want to get taken out of context or anything. So I said, no, we should probably do a meeting. Like we'll fly there like next weekend if you guys want to. And so they, 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 I really appreciate them. You know, they made some time for us and all that and hosted us wonderfully. I got to hang out with Josh Grove uh, for a day and all this. And, uh, but we had, you know, Matt, um, Cody Griswold, uh, all, the whole Suites team in, one, in their boardroom and, you know, at the Suites shop. And so um, they gave us like a private tour and everything. And we kind of got to see their side a little bit more of what, you know, we were going to be talking about because, you know, they wanted to pick my brain about honed and third party stuff, but like, uh, and how they could be involved with it. And, you know, we just went back and forth because they told me a ton of stuff that I didn't know, like they didn't make a ton of money, you know? And, you know, this was all stuff that, you know, we were there at length talking in detail about this kind of stuff. And so I'm glad we did it in person mm -hmm. because, you know, they were able to see our side, uh, you know, and we were able to clearly see their side. But for like a, a regular player, I mean, there, there's a million ways you can reach out, but, you know, how do they listen? I think that's the biggest thing is how do you get a company to listen to what you're doing? And so uh, that, that's just the thing you got to think about. Yeah, huge respect that you bought a plane ticket to go to Minneapolis. <laughs> to <Yeah. do> it. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. But I, I, I like what Show you said there. But one of the things that I think you've said that's important, and you know, if someone were to take the time and go back and listen to any of our episodes featuring any brand owner, is like they're just as much passionate about this game as you are as a consumer if not exponentially more because they put money behind their words yeah they're invested in it yeah. they're invested they've risked it and it sucks to get negative feedback where people are like yeah. ah, i don't like this it's like hey take a moment to just like realize that those brands have invested a lot of time energy into cultivating something that you are now attacking from behind your computer uh, and tone regardless of how politely you put it it, it hurts. It hurts to always receive that feedback, even if it's constructive, even if it's helpful. So when we can, I think being positive or at least being constructive in a, in a helpful way and not just being like, I don't like your shape, you know, take, take yeah. some, t take a step back and see what you're doing in the big picture. Anyways, MJ right. thoughts um, on it. Uh, yeah, I think it's, everyone is just used to making comments on SNS and just being very straight and direct like not capitalizing lose loss of punctuations and whatnot it, it stuff can be lost and the tone is very important i think it's just like just to be polite about it at the beginning so then nothing does happen um i know exactly what this dude was talking about because i saw his post and i did my nerds spine research and i found what the controversy was but it's like there's so many different people out there. So it's like you kind of like just be honest, but don't be like so overly strong. I think that's the biggest thing. Just be polite about the whole thing. Uh, if you really want a direct answer from the company, because you're just posting on their Instagram account, you're probably not going to get an answer. No, because Most likely they're not. And they're not, there's not a huge, it's not a big company. There's not an, there's not a social media team who is like working on that stuff. So if you want actual feedback, probably is just best to like find out their, their email address from their website and con like contact the company directly. Yeah, it's way more conversational. Article and post it in FKC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that'll change everything. Guys, the yeah. reason we have good apparel today in yeah. Kanama it's is because, because Ryan Reese yeah, wrote yeah. an article in FKC. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs>
<laughs> not because we have all collectively gotten better. <laughs> uh, it all started when Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was that was definitely just you know that's a European touch from the Chrome's, the Chrome yeah. guys. You know, they're apparently uh, yeah. they do stuff but, is is different. Yeah, I think br breaking it down. Don't be antagonistic. Be constructive and yeah. probably message privately first off. Uh, that they're going to listen to you better there because they're not trying to totally. stimulate an argument on social media as a brand. Right, right. It's not right. that helpful for them, and it's not helpful yes. for you because all of a sudden now you're going to be attacked by their community that loves them uh, right, and that's right. going to suck for yeah. you as well yeah. so maybe be aware of the implications you're going to receive and right. thirdly or fourthly be patient you know the turnaround time of creating a kendama is not a day uh, it takes time for anyone to make change in a company and respect that they're mostly doing this out of their own pocket and it's a big risk for them. And so they're taking big risks. These are not yeah. mega companies that are big pharma or anything like that where they're just reaping the cash on what they're doing. So that would yeah. be my breakdown of it. That would right. yeah, that'd be my thoughts. Okay, a yeah. couple more questions and then we're going to talk ro rumble in the rotunda, I think is what I called it. We're going to talk <laughs> about who's going to win this rotunda. unrestricted cage, cage match. <laughs> Um, this isn't a question, but from Doc Dama, he just wanted to say, uh, no question. Just want to say y'all are awesome. And this is so sick. Thank you. Doc yeah. Dama. Docs. Thanks. Uh, Zay with the Dama. Oh, he, he said, oh, he deleted his question because it was already asked. He wanted to know what happened to the home media website. It looks very different, but you've talked about this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is a great question. Uh, Kanama POV. Who is your favorite interviewer of all time? Like any interviewer ever? Sure. Or actually, maybe let me rephrase this. You can ans answer his question directly. But outside of our podcasts and outside of the Kanama podcast community, is there a podcaster or a podcast that you really look up to and get inspiration from? Oh, yeah. Howard Stern. The Howard Stern <laughs> podcast. I totally see that, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's the only thing I listen to. And so uh, it, it's a profound influence on me. And... Uh, just, I, I love everything he's done and how the show has just gone from, or being from a radio DJ to like having a full on, you know, serious XM show. But uh, definitely Stern because, you know, it's just like kind of like an anything goes and he gets down to like the truth of things. And I appreciate that. It's hard to see in modern media that I don't think we'll see it again. However, though, I think he kind of also created the podcast format way back in the yeah. day before it was like a thing. And so... Um, I get a lot of that credit to him, but I also love the Nine Club uh, yeah, the skate podcast. And, yeah. They bring in uh, skaters and this and that, and I skated when I was a kid, and so to hear these like childhood heroes of mine kind of like recount how this happened or whatever, like having Tony Hawk on there and learning about like how that video game was created, I was Dude, like, Dude, the oh, five-hour oh. Mike Vallely episode? Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. But, um, and it, well, it's cool, MJ. I mean, that, that's kind of like what you're doing for a lot of people too. It's like, people are gonna go back and like watch your interviews, you know, 10, 20 years from now and mm. look back at that like Dogtown era of Kendama. And, you know, cause I watched videos of Tony Hawk as a kid talking uh, yeah. on camera and stuff like that. And so I think a lot of like what we're doing now and you Adam too, mm. is like cataloging and archiving a history that, you know, it may not look important now, but in the future, people are going to return back to this. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, those, those would probably be mine too. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of my favorite shows that I listen to, I really like Side Hustle School by Chris Gillibo. He does an episode every day and he's been doing it for almost three or four years. And, you know, Ooh. all he's really, he has a couple different podcast concepts of how he runs his episodes, but the general format he does them in is he tells stories submitted by fans of how they started a side hustle well, without quitting their full-time job. Right, and right. It, it's one of the most inspiring shows to me because it's like, okay, all of these people are working a full-time job, like I think all of us are doing, and they've started this other project on the side that has become a substantial income for them. And how did they do it? And it's like, A, for me, it's like, okay, I can keep doing this. I can keep going. I'm going to grind it out. And I learned so many <laughs> tangible little skills from it that are so helpful and mm. inspiring to me. Uh, the other one uh, that I have found really you know, fun recently to watch is uh it's called are you garbage podcast and it's a youtube hosted podcast with h foley and kevin ryan there are two comedians out of new york and you know i'm, I'm not a, like big into comedy by any means but their format is so cool they have a great background set they're great communicators but they do the, their entire podcast is surrounded 
about asking your favorite comedians or finding out if your favorite comedians are garbage, like classy or trashy. And they ask them, you know, fun, quick whipped questions to find out whether or not they grew up classy or if they're just straight uh, trash. And, and it's such a fun podcast format to me. They do it so well. And I look up to the way they host their podcast more so than the guests or the content that's actually in it. It's such a good format. Well, so, oh, anyways, absolutely. Okay. Last question in each of your opinions, if you were to come into a cage match, which with each of us in there, who is going to win that battle and why? And you get to bring one Kendama with you. Which one are you bringing? First, I guess we should answer that question. If you were to go into a battle, no kaijus, has to be a standard Kendama. Uh, what Dama are you bringing into that rotunda? I'm, I'm definitely going to bring in the, uh, the antithesis here. Okay. Uh, just because uh, since I helped design it, it, gives, it, like, I, it allows me to do my finishing move, which I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, that, see, this is the thing, like, when you say cage match, how are we supposed to do this? So, like, okay, <laughs> let, me, let me paint the picture for us. We're, yeah. we're in the center of the Mall, uh, Mall of America in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. We're in the rotunda. There is what would be a UFC style flooring with walling coming up and around us, similar to Spider-Man 1. And we are walking in. We, we can have our own outfit. We can wear whatever we want. You know, baggy clothes, tight spandex. You know, you do you. You could come in as Howard Stern, whatever you want to do. And you bring in <laughs> one kendama. No, no coop straps, nothing. Gotcha. Nothing like that. Gotcha. One kendama. No, Who's leaving? Long <laughs> same, same with the Dama asked, how much coffee is Adam allowed to drink before this match? <laughs> <laughs> that's a determining factor for me. <laughs> yeah, so so that's the setting. Yeah, yeah so I, I see. So um, I would come just in my boxers all covered in uh, coconut oil. And uh, I would Slippery. only do tornadoes with the antithesis mod and keep you guys as far as away from me as possible until you just like pass out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Out. yeah, you gotta think about the prep for sure. Okay, I'm mm. definitely not showering. I'm gonna go <laughs> two weeks, no showers, full stench, gonna come in wafting. That is key for me. I'm bringing in a Terra Battle Scar, not because I think it'll do more, but I think the effects will be worth it. You know, the Battle Scar, can, um, <laughs> the more that I beat you with yeah, it, yeah, yeah. the more red that you see on the Dama. Uh -huh, so I think uh -huh. that that's important to me. And Oh, I, I didn't think of a stage name, but the, the caffeinated, right now. <laughs> well, it's got to be like yeah. the caffeinated uh, crusader or something. Yeah, uh, the like, caffeinated yeah. kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's how I'm coming in. What about you, MJ? Like that. Jeez, dude, whoever would hit, whoever would take me out first would be the winner over me because I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to be playing Kendama. I'm going to be asking you dudes, you want to just hang out? You want to play a game of Ken? Yeah. Let's just walk out of here together unscathed yeah. friends. I, I think we'd all just start talking about Kendama and forgetting that we're even we'd all just start fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. Just start pl playing Kendama. Yeah. It's a long yeah. and boring match and no one, right. we just we tire our own selves out. I actually don't think yeah. we'd end up fighting. I think as you know, I wouldn't. I'm I'm, pre I'm a pretty <laughs> passive yeah, <right>? guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Me too. Well, I think it's safe to say it would be a boring match for people to watch. It might turn into a Ken. It would just turn into a podcast episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be yeah, part two of this episode, it. which I think we should do at some point. I think that this was helpful. I think it was a good episode for people to listen to in terms of just hearing some of the story behind non brands and doing what we're doing. I think it's cool, man. I think it's sick. Yeah. Thanks Dude, a lot Adam, for having thank us, you. man. I really appreciate it. And I really like everything that you do. Hey, yeah. I like everything that I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it's at, dude. That's what yeah. it should be for everyone. Like, not only just us, for everyone who is doing whatever they're, they're attaining, whatever their goal is, whatever they're chasing after. That's what it's about. Absolutely. Hey, guys, if you are still listening this far into the episode, whether or not on Spotify, Apple, or you were here with us in the live or on IGTV or on YouTube now, we're uploading hey. these to YouTube on Mondays. Uh, Guys, go and support your favorite third-party content creator, whether or not that's the Nerds or the Bevel's Advocate or Brewview or any of these other organizations out there that are doing non-brand affiliated work. Uh, go find ways to support them, whether or not that's dropping a DM in their inbox saying, hey, thank you for doing what you're doing. I understand yeah. how much work you put into this 
and you don't get that much out of it. Uh, whether or not it's monetarily, we get a lot of value personally, though that heart cash, as we talked about, yeah, um, yes. if you can monetarily support and you would like to do that, a head to the Bevel's advocate or home media, pick up a Kanama. They have a few yeah. Kanamas that yeah. they've collabed yeah. with, with soul Signal Kanamas. Jammers. The signal jammers. Are free shipping. These are the soul one up or I can just send you my Venmo too. Yeah, or you can just send Venmo if you just want to pay Ryan. If you want to support the Dominators, head to their Patreon. Uh, you want to plug that for us real quick, MJ? Dude, yeah, definitely. We have a Patreon through Kentertainment is uh, the link. We have a Instagram page for Kentertainment and uh, Dominators. So just go over there, look through that, or check out YouTube. And there should be links for all that stuff. It really means a lot. And, you know, with it, with Rod, my buddy in Dama Arms, but I'm pretty much a one-man band doing all the entertainment stuff so any support is I'm super grateful for uh and it just yeah keeps the train going absolutely Thanks. and if you've been listening to the preview for some time you've heard me say this recently we kicked off a patreon this year and i'm so grateful for all the patreon supporters that have chosen to join the coffee gang and if you'd yeah. like to do that as well it's just five dollars a month and that gets you behind the scenes access to everything review insights into what's going on and the stories behind the stories of how they came to be uh, we're uploading content on youtube and right here on the cafe kanama instagram and on the website as well we have some blogs up there but i've been really yeah. slow on the blogs blogs are harder than podcasts and everything else mm -hmm. blogs are blogs are not easy yeah. i think in my opinion because i'm so I, I like perfectionist go. about them i want them yeah, to be great yeah, yeah, yeah. and not yeah. like and you got to go through the seo the titles make sure good content there's a lot to think about <sighs> it's exhausting yeah. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for being on here. Ryan, MJ, any final words you'd like to say to the, the caffeinated community over here at the Brewview? Uh, go ahead, MJ. Uh, take a break every once in a while. Put that down and down. Relax. And I'll build on that. Don't get stuck on Planet Kendama. That's what happened to me. There's times where you can get way too invested in it and get overwhelmed and, you know, people that's how people fall off as well you know i got so sucked into it that you know I, I was getting fed up with it in any regard and i stopped playing i stopped following people i stopped caring and that was because i was just too wrapped up in it so mm -hmm. i agree take a break and just remember it's supposed to be fun it's about the community and you know it's not all about the tricks and never give up so thanks for having us on adam and yeah adam those are two big shots fired, and they were great ones. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much. And thank you, chat, for being here with us till the yes. end of the longest episode on Brewview to date. So thank you, guys. Yeah. New yeah. record set. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, MJ, you want to say your concluding words? Do you, that, do you have final words that you like to say to your audience? And then uh, Ryan, and then, and then I can finish her off here for us. Uh, on that note, the nerds are out <laughs> thanks for watching and uh more episodes are coming soon and guys stay caffeinated and we will see you next week with a brand new cup filled with coffee i never said that before but it sounded right in the moment oh it sounded good <laughs> see